Welcome back, Achievers, to your... Oh my god, Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of June 22nd already. 2023. I'm one of your OC Elijah. Sitting with me today, very, very, very special guest. One from Penultimate Conquest. Please, introduce yourself. Hello, my name I didn't is get your I didn't get your accolades, so I want you to introduce yourself prior. Okay, alright, I think I can do that. Oh boy putting the pressure on me already mm. <laughs> my name is ruben guerrero i am the creator well the head creator of the penultimate conquest i have a bunch of people that help me out with that channel uh, you've had christian macias on before he's mm-hmm. done a shit ton of great work for the channel specifically his Very good. uh video essays mm-hmm. that have just skyrocketed probably the highest views we've had on the channel so always very impressive really appreciate it. yes he is a godsend <laughs> um but other than that you know we, we're a small youtube channel that likes to talk about video games anime tv shows movies marvel dc I- when it's good <laughs> yeah when it's good i've been on there a few times too it's always a great time you guys are very yes. always very welcoming too which is something i love we try to be we try to be what made you specifically want to come on i'm just curious this is such something random i've never actually asked anyone this but i'm just curious what made you want to come on is it something so i specifically? have a, i have How a lovely tendency. i am <laughs> Uh, I have a tendency to uh, be be fearful of, mm. I guess, one on one conversations because, okay. as an introvert, I don't like talking. Ah, so I tried to. Uh, this is why, uh, majorly on the con- on the penultimate conquest, you will never see me with just one other person. I like mm. to have multiple people, just because, like, I'm afraid of the lulls of of a conversation. Okay. Um, but I decided to, you know, hop on and talk video games with you because you are have been on my show, and I figured, yeah. hey, why the hell not? Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I love that. Why, why not? I mean, what's funny is I am kind. I would, I would also describe myself as an introvert, but I like talking, which is sounds conflicting. But if it's, given the option, I would le- never leave my house. So luckily, I found a a good yeah. wife to push me out of the home. <laughs> all the time she's always saying like let's go do this and this so if not i would literally never probably leave my house i would i die. think it's a little it's a little different because you are so well spoken mm. and thank you pretty was, much everything nice yeah of course no problem everything that comes out of my mouth is just like you know not as well spoken as you <laughs> are I think you're selling yourself short, but I appreciate that. Um, I probably am, but that's my anxiety speaking. So of course, no, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I've I've gotten better with the anxiety. I have a lot of I used I, well, I say I should say I used to have a lot of public anxiety. So like if mm-hmm. in large groups, I just can't get them like out of my head, like I'm bothering people or something. That was right, always right, a problem right. for me, but I feel like I've gotten better just by just reminding myself like no one cares about you. That's kind of, yeah, that's literally yeah. what I tell myself if I get that. Like, yeah. No one cares about me. Like I'm just another guy. So like, why yeah. am I worried? And I think that comes with age. Like Probably. when you're younger, you're yeah. like, oh my God, everybody's looking at me when clearly yeah. nobody is. No one couldn't about give. Me. Nobody even knows who you are. Yeah. yeah. You. <laughs> I use that as, as it's good that you say that because, like, as a little kid, I would I would like break out in sweats because I would like yeah. I feel like I would bothering someone just yep. by existing in a room. Mm-hmm. I was and, the same way. Yeah, so uh, it's funny how, like you said, age kind of just breaks you out of that. Uh, by the way, this is a video game podcast, so we come to you every single Friday, and we break the news. See, we talk about everything that we find relevant for the news week, uh, be it something that is happening in the FTC courts as of recording, or it could be anything between. Something like a video game being canceled, anything in between. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm excited, really specifically, to talk about you because although it's a light news week, we have dense news topics, if that makes sense, right? There's not much yes. to talk about, but the what we have to talk about, I feel like it's going to invoke a lot of conversation. I'm excited, so let's start with Not So Rapid Fire. Call of Duty Warzone Caldera. I saw this. I was actually surprised about this. Uh, I saw this like an hour ago. I was too. Call of Duty Warzone Caldera will shut down on September 21st on all consoles it's available on. Of course, PCs included. 
Uh, I guess this is pretty aggressive seeking. They just were like, hey, this is no more. So go to Warzone 2. We want your money there and we want to support stuff there. They did mention on the Call of Duty blog slash website that this frees them up to do more things in Warzone 2 and et cetera, et cetera. Why it seems it so st strange. It's, it seems like old. It's, it seems so old to do it this way because it's almost like that three ish year. It's not quite three, but it's a little over. But like oh, three year life life cycle of video game and then they leave it. It yeah, feels yeah. very similar to that where they're like, all right, no more new maps or anything. You know, we're just moving on. Mm -hmm. But I don't see anyone mad. So I guess why wouldn't they do it if no one cares? My thing is. Once you launched Warzone 2, why did you not just take this down and have those servers like being used with Warzone 2? So I actually thought about that too. Like, why not just switch the pop up that you have to download to Warzone 2? Yeah. I don't know because, well, my first reaction was, oh, well, it's because of the previous gen, but I believe, yeah, on Warzone 2, I, um, you can Warzone play it on PS4. So I believe that's not so, the yeah. reason. So uh, I could, I really can't Plus, think of a reason why it's still here. I think it's because there's purchable content and they just want you to feel better that it just lasted a little longer than what yeah, it could have been. Blizzard did it with Overwatch and Overwatch 2. I do. So it's a free to play game. Yeah, it is. I, I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it, it was strange and. I'll be curious if this is what they just they're just going to keep doing. Obviously, Activision is just kind of up in air with, of course, the deal that's mm -hmm. going ongoing. We'll cover that later in the show. But it just seems strange. We're like, what? Why? Why do this? It seems so old, too. We're like, oh, there's a Warzone one and then there's a Warzone two. Why yeah. is there even a sequel to begin with? It didn't exactly. need to exist. So why? But yeah, well, that, that's I a whole section of the gaming space that I used to be in. But I don't really do battle royales anymore so i, I don't really i wouldn't say much. it doesn't need to exist I, th mm. I do think warzone 2 is the better version of warzone okay uh, i mean uh, this is me saying this but i haven't played it since it launched or like mm. a couple months after it launched but i do think right. they improved it tremendously from warzone to caldera so I think it was a smart move for them to just like redo the whole thing. But then again, I really I think I remember there's a news story uh, saying that they just reverted it back to Warzone. But yeah, I, I remember. Wrong. I remember there was like a huge problem with how they were doing the game with I think loadouts. Yeah, and like you yeah. said, they changed it back, or I think there's different yeah. modes now that it doesn't matter. So, uh, who knows? yeah, as soon as you s changed it back to how uh, it was in Warzone 1, you should have just taken this offline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Reminds me of Overwatch 2 where it's at this point, it's like, why why did we even yeah. do this? And I imagine they, I honestly don't believe they wanted to do Overwatch 2 at a certain point, but no, they had announced it and they were like, we got to do it. <laughs> so I think it was just the Blizzard executives trying probably, to. I mean, probably, and honestly, it probably, it probably was. They were probably like, hey, yeah. make a second one. Why isn't there a second one? And mm -hmm. I guess they couldn't find a compelling enough reason to say no. But Destiny 2 is is yeah. very popular and it's making money. Why the hell aren't we doing an Overwatch 2? Yeah, yeah. So. And they're like, well, yeah. why? I don't know. It's, it's yeah. all good reasons and all bad reasons yes. for many of these situations. Bobby Kotick is probably laughing <laughs> laughing with his millions like mr burns yeah yes. yeah licking his thumbs and flipping through yep. all his money yep according to vgc sony has had a major departure in their mobile division as nicola sebastinian sebastani i think it's I would say, yeah sebastiani yeah. sebastiani yeah has left the company after only two years in the division nicola joined in 2021 after being head of content at apple arcade Nicola has built up Sony's mobile division and may have been directly responsible for the acquisition of Savage Game Studios back in August of last year. To add, it seems the position Nokia is leaving, either voluntarily or not, will be headed by two people as co-heads of mobile at PlayStation. As spotted on LinkedIn, those names are Chris Davies and Oliver, whew, let's try, Court Manchi. Court Manchi? It's probably yeah, French. I would say. Yeah. Has filled the position. I don't have too much to add to this because we don't have much to go on. I know Savage Games has yet to release something just because they were just purchased. I 
am very curious why he left because it's only been two years. So that lets me to believe either he got fired or poached by someone else. Maybe I highly doubt he had a two year contract. That just doesn't seem yeah. like something that PlayStation would do. So I feel like either he was poached by someone else. I don't really can't imagine if he left Apple. I mean, like who who could poach him? Yeah, exactly. To leave with whatever PlayStation gave, gave him, but yep. he could have been fired because of maybe some sort of milestone that he hasn't reached. I don't know. We might not know uh, just because of the confidential nature of a specific and higher up position. But I don't have too much else to add because we haven't really got much out of mobile, so I, it's hard to go off whether this is good or bad. I was trying to look up to see what uh, Savage Games has done, and it, I can't seem to find any. Yes, video game. I I want to say just that they're working on a AAA unannounced. Mobile yeah, I rem- Yeah, they hadn't made a game yet. I don't believe. Oh my okay. god, I can't remember. This was like I said, this was last August. I want to say they had not made a game. So something, but what you assume is they got an early because probably they were cheap. Right, uh, right. So you get them in early so you don't have to pay that big money. And whatever they had is assumably impressive. It yeah. reminds me of um Haven. Where it's like they yep. bought them so early. I'm like, whatever they have, they have to believe in it. I think really with Haven, uh, I'm sorry, we're going on a tangent. No, no. With please, Haven, I think it was just the, show is. Uh, the, the, the head of the studio. I forgot her name. Oh, my God. Jade Raymond. Yes. I think it was just the the name of Jade Raymond, what she's worked on. They decided, like, yeah, we're in on it. You you want to make a game? Go right ahead. We'll just back you. Yeah, and again, I think uh, just they were cheap too is another thing. And also, Jade yeah. Raymond specifically, her studio is so interesting, and I I can't wait to see what they'll do because they keep talking about how they're going to change the way games are made. And of course, that could be flowery talk, or maybe it could be of substance. But I remember a lot of their f- first few hires um when they were uh before they were even bought by playstation uh were all engineers so yeah. they were all they're all developing something over there with cloud-based ways of making games and all these things and that's something i'm very curious to see what comes out of that studio of course aside from the game they're making um fair games fair games thank you fair games okay. dollar sign okay so so yeah. silly yeah. fair games with the dollar sign <sighs> Yves Gilmont has stated that Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope should not have been released on the Switch. This is uh, advised by Nintendo specifically, and he relayed this via an interview with Games Shop Biz. I don't have much else to add other than this specific quote I grabbed out of the article. Nintendo has advised that it's better to do one iteration on each machine. We were a bit too early. We should have waited for the next console, end quote. I don't think anyone's shocked that a new Switch is coming at some point, but it was interesting that he was so open about it. I don't think anyone was shocked that Ubisoft tried to push out a game that they should have waited for. That's very astute. <laughs> very astute of you, because <laughs> that is quite the Ubisoft mood. Nintendo, one of the biggest, if not the biggest game developer slash publisher of all time, gave mm-hmm. you advice and you ignored it. That is a very Ubisoft mood. I have to agree. Yeah, like just used just being like yeah no they said we should probably wait and we just released it <laughs> that's yeah, pretty yeah. that's pretty funny they could have probably just held this thing what another yeah. year two years and nothing would have changed uh what did they uh what game came out last year for ubisoft that wasn't uh rainbow six extraction yeah uh, oh gosh, i'm not no. counting the Ezio collection for switch i'm not counting that yeah <laughs> Trivial pursuit live two roller yeah, champions very ubisoft Roller yeah. Champions, something I always forget exists. Yeah. Uh, Rabbids Party of Legends, which I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know what that, I don't know what that is. That's hilarious. Wild the, Arena Survivor. These are all games. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. These are all games that I am, yeah. They just needed something to tell the investors like, hey, don't worry, we're gonna, we got a huge game coming out. And it's with Nintendo, so it can't be bad. It can't be bad. Well, it'll have to make yeah. money. And he even brings yeah. up that it will, like, he pretty much says it's their fault because it's like it's not a saturation issue. There's 25 Mario games and they all sell. So, like, he yeah. just, he pretty much is straight up like, yeah, no, we messed up and it's, it's all too early and now it's, it's done. And, and apparently it did shockingly bad to the point where they are well, pretty open with how bad it did. <laughs> like, it's pretty yeah. rare when something's done so bad that you're open with how bad it is. You got to think of it, it 
released October 2022. And I'm pretty sure yeah. there were some pretty heavy hitters that decided to come out around that time. Uh, I don't remember any of them. Maybe <laughs> it was close to God of War, which I'm not saying that has anything to do with the Switch. But I just feel like when Nintendo says something about their platform, you should probably listen to them, especially if it's one of their properties. I think they know yeah. what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and what's even better is is it's on their own machine. So you would think yeah. they'd be like, yeah, no, never mind, we'll wait. Yeah. Because uh, Ubisoft, plenty of money to hold the game for however long they need to. But I'm also surprised that Nintendo decided to, like, just let them release the game. I assume there's nothing in their agreement that says they could just say, no, you can't release it. But it is Nintendo. I'm sure they could have yeah. moved some Nintendo weight around. Has... Yeah. That they could have been like, you're not going to release this. You're going to wait. I actually don't think that's actually too crazy to say. They probably could have been like, no, wait, they probably they might Prime, not have cared. They probably were just like Prime remastered. <laughs> Let's not forget how long that's been waited that's, for. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But um that that is interesting that Nintendo didn't heavily tell them. Maybe they but again, maybe they just didn't care. They're like, eh, you know, we, yeah, you already paid our was, fees and yeah. we'll get a cut of the money. So we don't really care what you do. Exactly. They didn't have anything to do with it. The, the, this is using their IP. They're getting paid no matter what. Go for mm-hmm. it. If you want to yep. release it? That's on you. Next up, troubling for many, for me included, I, I don't really see a problem, but obviously I'm not some of them affected. Microsoft is going to be hiking the Xbox Series X, and the Xbox Game Pass pricing in a lot of regions. Now, the Xbox Series S will stay the exact same price in the U.S. market, but it will change drastically in a lot of other markets, pretty much following the previous price hike that Sony did last year. Yep. So it's almost the pretty much exact same. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the Game Pass ones, and let me see if I can actually grab a couple quick... So let's go ahead and quickly go over the Series X pricing. And then I have a whole graph that I'm going to read some because I know um, I almost know every I have. Yeah, I know a few of these that we are listening to in some of these countries. So I'll list off all the ones that I know people listen from. So let's start from Xbox Series X in the UK. It's going to be moving to forty seven ninety nine or sorry, four hundred and seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, most European markets, it's five forty nine. In Canada, it will be six forty nine ninety nine. Australia, a whopping seven nine ninety nine. The Series S pricing will be pretty much not moved at all in any market. So that will still remain two ninety nine, as they continue to heavily push the massively, massively uh, cheaper model. And I'm gonna read a couple of these Game Pass changes. Let's start with Australia. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate Current in Australia is fifteen ninety five. The new one's going to be eighteen ninety five. The Game Pass Current model for Australia ten ninety five. Going to be switching to eleven ninety five. Canada sixteen ninety nine to eighteen ninety nine. Game Pass the current is eleven ninety nine. Switching to twelve ninety nine. Uh, I know we have some France listeners. Twelve ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine. Nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine. Of course, that's Game Pass and a Game Pass Ultimate. Let's go to Ireland, twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine. Game Pass Ultimate, of course, and then Game Pass nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine. Mexico, two twenty nine to two forty nine, one forty nine, one fifty nine. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Spain, twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine, nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine. Uh, Sweden, one thirty five, one fifty five. 99 105 last but not least uk 1099 to 1299 799 899 of course the first one was always game pass ultimate the second one was always game pass and then in the u.s we would see a two dollar increase to game pass ultimate 1699 and the regular game pass subscription will now be 1099 i will go ahead and say that to me, I do not care about really any of these console prices or sorry, the service pricings because in the US it is very marginal. Uh, I would probably pay the it if it was twenty dollars, to be frank. So this is still a great deal to me, uh, because Xbox is my main place to pay and Game Pass is too too good of a deal to pass up. I don't know if you are actually a Game Pass 
player. Of course, you can have it for PC. Oh, and uh, to reiterate, Game Pass for PC is not going up at all in any markets. It's still going to be the flat, I think it's $7.99. When I push it to um, Ruben, I'll look that up for you guys. But what did you think of this? Did you care at all? I <laughs> I thought it was inevitable. Yeah, of course. Uh, they, they had uh, mentioned, Phil Spencer had mentioned bef- uh, last yeah. year that he last said year. he was going to... Uh, they're not pushing prices up yet, but they will be in the yeah. future. Yeah, so I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Um, I think as we get closer and closer to Xbox actually pulling off what they've promised, uh, this yeah. makes the most sense. Rather do it now than later um, and miss out on all that money. Because, you know, for us in the U.S., Two dollars times however many people are in the U.S. That's a substantial amount of money yep. to be made. Uh, also, they need to be able to pay everybody that works in the thirty-four studios that they have. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, please raise the price if it means people keep their jobs. Yes, uh, you said something at the very beginning there that I really resonate with. That they're doing this early to get the prices in before Game Pass mm-hmm. gets very good. Let's not forget Matt Booty actually went on record before, and also he's done it prior during the showcase announcement. He went on an interview saying the plan is a exclusive every quarter. Yeah. It's a lot of value, yeah. especially at the given price. Even now, with the increase, it's still pretty impressive. And just as a reminder, 25 million people subscribe to Game Pass. So yeah. times two, that's 50 million extra revenue a year. Of course, I do not remember if this is including PC as well. I believe it was at the time. That was back in 2022. So in theory, it could be half and half split or something. Who knows? But yeah, uh, but still, still, still a lot of money. Extra revenue that you could just make for pretty much nothing. And very smart timing to put it around a bunch of news because they knew the FTC news would be big and all these things. Put it right there where. You know, you can picture like the IGN articles that are listed, like that's going to be pushed down quite a bit because of yep. what's happening over the week. So very smart uh, announcement Plus, timing, of course, very sad to see it when prices inevitably go up on anything. It's it sucks, but it's not surprising. It could be worse. You know, they it, <laughs> Netflix, the, the article here from The Verge uh, mentions Netflix. Netflix just decided, hey, we're going to start making people get accounts. Yeah. And they pay per household. Yeah. Yeah. And they managed to make more money, mm-hmm. you know, th- th- which is insane to me. I don't think I, I would have assumed people would have just canceled it. But yeah. So it's two bucks. It, it's not as steep as it as it could be, especially most of these games are make are gonna be costing them a lot of money to be made. Well, money to make. Um, so yeah, I, two bucks is, is no big deal. Yeah, it's ten ninety nine. So let's say it's 11 times 12. That's like 130 ish. So that's the price of like two games plus a little extra. Yeah. So if out of your entire Game Pass experience over a year, if you have played two full price games, you, it's worth it. That's way worth it. So that's how yeah. I look at it anyways. Um, I could be more selective of the months I use because like, for instance, I probably haven't played a Game Pass game in a month or two, so I could have like unsubscribed, but like, I'm just going to leave it there, right? For convenience. Xbox in maybe half of a year. I don't blame you. There's nothing there to play. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that's going to change, but yes, I do not blame you. I remember I when people recently... would ask. Go ahead, please. I, I just recently uh, got a new graphics card, so now I'm oh, able wow. to play PC games. So I am anxious to play some, uh, mm. but as of right now, you know, there's not really anything on Game Pass that is catching my eye. But Steam Next Next Fest has been just like I've just been writing shit down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Steam, yeah. Steam is, PC is something I've always wanted to like. It's just not. Not for me. There's something about just a controller and a couch, but I, I, I it's something I'm always that. envious of. It's yeah, something I'm always I, envious of. I wish more games on PC had controller support because yeah. I, I can't do this with keyboard and mouse. Yeah, and what's and what's funny is I I can do the PC 
I'll mess up maybe a few times, but like overall I can do it. It's just, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I want to sit on my couch with my big TV. I get it. I get it. This is something I wanted to bring up because it's relevant, but I, I couldn't really find anything really like, Ooh, let's talk about this, but I want to still read this off and point to people to go check it out. If they'd like to read more. This is Halo Infinite leak allegedly shows 343's dev processes and how they collaborate with other studios. This was over on Windows Central, a very interesting kind of tidbit into how specifically 343 managed their giant outsourcing uh, fiasco that they called Halo Infinite's development. But also they kind of talk about how they make the uh, cutscenes in the game. Uh, and I have a couple things I wanted to read from the snippet from this article. Of course, Windows Central by, let's make sure to get the author, Brendan Lowry. Always a great writer over there. The document highlights the six key pillars of 343's storytelling approach with Halo, which are diversity, camaraderie, spectacle, adventure, community, and meaning. Additionally, it identifies the quote-unquote stage play style of Halo Infinite's cinematics in which lights are often dimmed and the scene directly focused on characters, their dialogue, and their body language. Then, towards the end of the scene, quote, quote unquote, the house lights come back on to signal players that they'll soon regain control of their character. 3 for 3 calls this, quote, the distinction between the game's story and the player's story, end quote. From start to finish, the guide indicates that cinematics take roughly 24 weeks to complete for a very small team. Though this timeline was drawn from the creation of a cutscene in which everything was done from scratch, in scenarios where the screens, or sorry, where the scenes and environment has already been made or its characters were previously modeled and rigged, development length can be shortened considerably. Now, if all this is real, this is actually quite an interesting look in how games are made, especially how cutscenes are made. And I did love how they kind of like boil it down to, you know, stage lights and stage play, just like a stage. I thought it was very interesting. Go check it out if you'd like to read a little more. That's kind of the most important snippet that I found, personally. Uh, this was actually shown by a known leaker called Bathrobe Spartan on Twitter. Very interesting name there. Uh, aside from that, did you find anything? I don't know if you found this article. This was only published three days ago, but did you find anything interesting in this or have any comments? I think, it for me, it, it kind of sheds a light on just development from a gaming from a studio in general, because yeah. I personally would not have thought like, Hey, this is how we divide the storytelling. Cause I don't know if for me, this feels like, Oh, this is like the old way of thinking. Cause mm-hmm. when I take a look at God of war, 2018, God of war, Ragnarok, yeah. I don't think of it like the way that they're describing it, which kind of makes sense because you know, all the Halo games kind of look alike in the sense of yeah. like the cutscenes are all the same, how they describe it, the distinction between the game story and the player story. Okay. They all have that lighting effect. So it, it's interesting. I feel like they could probably do some changing because <laughs> Halo Infinite, while I thought it was a great game, it didn't do so well. Right. I, I there might be a little bit of a disconnect in the way that these uh six key pillars are are mm. interacting with each other. Yeah, I found it quite interesting that they said the stage light aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I will say I actually kind of agree with your original statement being it does kind of feel like an old way of doing things. At no point in Halo Infinite was I like, confused when the gameplay was going to start because it's right. a very zoomed in, like, like mm-hmm. you know, it goes to his head. You know, you see the gun coming up. At no point when the lighting changed did I go like, oh, you know, it, the cutscene's close to close to ending. Maybe that is my memory or the way I interact no, with the game changing that. But right. I, I have to really admit that. I feel like that's very old. I do remember that kind of feeling, Mm -hmm. especially from when I was watching my dad play things way back when I was a little kid that like you would watch a cutscene and you'd be like, oh, oh, like you'd grab the controller because you didn't know you were in control. Sometimes that is something Mm -hmm. like I do think, you know, like 10, 
20 years ago that was kind of like, yeah, you know, you just want to kind of communicate, hey, this cutscene's over, grab the controller. Gears of War was kind of, kind of, sort of like a thing, but that had more of a yeah. cutscene than yep. a cutscene happening in the real time of the game. Mm-hmm. But I, I have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. My point's over. I, I think that was an interesting look at to it, but it does seem very, very old. It would actually almost make more sense for something like you said, God of War Ragnarok to have like a very clear, like, hey, the cutscene's over. And I think they do a good job of it, too, because they do a fantastic the cam- job. The camera goes in a very specific point. It feels very mm-hmm. natural when you're picking the controller back up and going to uh, start the game again. Whereas this, I feel like it's even more obvious. So it's interesting yeah. that they feel like they have to communicate hey, the game's coming back. Yeah, especially the the stage play style is, is like, I I think people are smarter than (laughs) you give them credit for. Not to say that they're saying people are dumb. It's just, you know, nowadays, most people can tell what's cutscene and what's not. Agreed. Yeah. Of course, every single... Easy Chibis Game Podcast asks a single question to my co-host, and of course, to you at home. You can tell me, what have you been playing? Now, of course, this could be anything. You make sure you leave a comment. You can actually tweet at me at EVM1000. Let me know what you've been playing over the week or the weekend. Ruben, what have you been playing? I've been trying to finish Tears of the Kingdom before Final Impressive. Fantasy 16 comes out. And uh, now, did you do it? I, I currently don't have Final Fantasy 16 in my hands right now. Okay. I have to uh, Best Buy decided, oh, we gave out too many pre-orders and mm. don't have enough. Got to love so it. So I had to yeah, so I had to buy it from GameStop. I could pick it up tomorrow. Uh they told okay. me. So I have another night. Uh I have gotten up to the final fight with Ganondorf. Okay. However, I am trying to make sure I you know, finish clear the map essentially like the depths i want to make sure i have gotten all the little lights you know yeah. um and yeah side quests yeah i can take them or leave them i'm in i was I kind of in a similar boat over the week i actually finished tears of the kingdom i'm the similar vein of you where i did want a lot of i had a personal list that i wanted done um mm-hmm. the underground wasn't a part of that but i did want to do like the no spoilers of course i did want to do like the labyrinths on the the map i wanted to do like you know this many korok seeds um i did want to finish the shrines but i just want i really wanted i really wanted to beat the game because i heard it was very good so i was like you know what i was at 121 i think oh wow impressive yeah so i'm going to go back and and clean that up there's 152 or 150 i don't remember I think it's 152. You might be right. Okay. It, it, regardless, I, I will go back and finish the last little bit I have. I just wanted to have that done because I did hear it was very good. So I was like, you know what? Let's go finish the game. I got the gear set I wanted upgraded like all the way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all that good stuff. So when I go back to the game, it will be to finish those shrines. Probably will be done after that. I'm like you where I did the side quests that were interesting. I feel like the side quests I have now just seem like kind of like busy work. There's yeah. one where you have to go and find all the wells. I am not doing that. So like, yeah, that's that's <laughs> that sounds awful. I mean, frankly, it sounds really boring. But the game is incredible. Very very happy with the game. Um, I, I frankly can't recommend the game enough. I think everyone really should should try. If you have literally any interest in Zelda open world games See, at what's all, what's interesting to me is I couldn't stand Breath of the Wild. I thought mm. Breath of the Wild was a bad game. Uh, in the sense of, let me rephrase, it's, it wasn't a bad game. It was not my Legend of Zelda. Okay. And then Hashtag not it. my Legend of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> then I played it. I finished the story. I didn't like the, uh, the uh, I forgot what they're called, the monsters. No, not the monsters. The uh, Divine Beasts. Divine Beasts. There you go. I hated yeah. the Divine Beasts. Okay. Um, but I am fully in love with Tears of the Kingdom. I, I agree. Yeah. I not as down on it as you are, but I was not a Breath of the Wild guy. I'm very, very, very well documented at being saying that game is very overrated. But yeah. it is a very great video game. But 
very overrated. This is the first time I've actually been with the greater gaming conversation ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. we'll call it and agreeing, saying, no, th- no, th- this is the game changer. This is the one that that I really do think designers in five to eight to ten years in interviews will say, what's the biggest inspiration? It's going to be this. Or someone, some kid out there is going to say this. You know, this, I think, is really that game that does kind of change a lot of how designers think, specifically mm-hmm. how easy they make it to, quote unquote, break encounters. But you don't yeah. actually break them because you're doing it with the tools that they give you. So breaking an encounter feels very good, but you're not really breaking the encounter because it's intended because yeah. they give you the ability to do it. I feel like that's going to be adopted a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but some there was something real special about Tears of the Kingdom. And I was actually very happy that I sat down and gave it a try because it's yeah. very good. It is very, very good. It is kind it's of shocking. The, there's one thing I would say, though. The combat, little stale so after. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it gets stale. It gets stale. Like, you're pretty much, once you fight your first fight, mm-hmm. that's pretty much the fight you would be doing the entire game. It doesn't really change at all. Uh, nope. You have a bow. You have a sword. You have a shield. That's pretty much yeah. what it is. Uh, two-handed weapons are way overpowered. Like, super, mm-hmm. super duper strong. I don't know why they're that strong, but. Made the game very you easy. Put more force, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but I, uh, I will say th- that's the one thing I will say. Like, they should have figured the combat out, but at least, literally everything else is perfect. So it's like mm-hmm. hard to complain. Yes, I will say it, it's funny that uh, the Legend of Zelda seems to have this divide mm. over their game specifically: Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. That's true. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah it, it's funny. Link to the Link past, past. Link between worlds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird, but it's also like, huh? It makes me wonder what kind of person you are. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, Link. I don't know. Zelda is so special, and I do feel yeah. like people kind of sleep on the franchise. Just how many bangers there are for them i think it's one of the best franchises probably ever made if you really like sit down and kind of like parse through there's a lot of junk there's also like mm-hmm. a lot of really good stuff they did a lot of spin-off titles for some reason i don't know why they ever did that but i will say some of the spin-off titles for the, the spirit tracks not good okay i see i hear but is it phantom hourglass i heard that one's a good one i've never played that i heard one. phantom hourglass is a good one i haven't played phantom hourglass so uh Legend of the Four Swords on the Game Boy. Oh, Advance. yeah, really yeah. I yeah. heard that one was like, hello, Oracle like Vages, very Oracle good. Games. It's just, it's a co-op yeah. game. Yeah, the Oracle games. I've actually never even sat down oh, to even attempt yeah. them. I should try them one day. Fingers crossed for whenever Nintendo decides, hey, we're gonna re-release those mm. and make uh, Link's Awakening style, which I would love. What's funny is it's it's always hilarious when you really think that Nintendo just sits on all these games. Yeah. And just can do whatever they want, you know, like every now and then they were like, hey, you can have a Super Mario RPG remake. Like yeah. just whenever whenever it comes to their whim, like, oh, you know, here's this. Here's this one of the best games ever made. Here's one of the best games ever made. Like just slowly priest through it like whenever they want. It's very fun. They're a very interesting company. I would love to sit down and do like a docuseries on like how they look at their own IP because it's so something so unique. And what's funny is they don't they're not a big saturation company. No. But they do a lot of the same things, so it's almost like. I think well, me personally, I think, I think Nintendo is still riding the high of Animal Crossing New Horizons that sold a bunch of <laughs> yeah. gangbusters. That probably which... made them. Oh, uh, not probably. It did make it. I can't imagine they were probably. I know the internals probably new pre-orders and these things. They were mm-hmm. probably incredibly shocked how much that sold. Yeah, that yeah. probably generate I mean, if... them. A billion plus in revenue easily, probably. Yeah, and it came out, not to say it came out the perfect time, but like it literally came out the perfect time when everybody was at home and yep. couldn't do anything outside. So, and they just said cha-ching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, quickly to add, I played more Diablo. Don't really have much to add. I did beat the game. It it's a bit long, if I'm being honest, in the full on oh, story, beat, but the story is at least interesting. You so beat the game. I did. 
How many hours did you put into this? Oh, geez. <laughs> I was going to say, didn't this game come out last year, last week? Uh, let's see how many hours I put in while that loads. Um, the game was very good. What's funny is you say that I have like a level 50 character, a level 31 and a level 15. So like I've really been playing a lot of this game. And I don't think I've I it doesn't it didn't feel that long. Like it wasn't like a. You know, like a deep Final Fantasy game or something like, you know, right, right, right. right, right. But I understand where they like, geez, you beat it already. It didn't feel that long. Let me see if I can quickly get the my hours. From what I'm hearing, people are just saying like, hey, it, like you said, it's not Final Fantasy numbers. I hear people have pushed, uh, put uh, 60, 55, 60 hours into Final Fantasy 16. But Diablo, I would consider it being a live service, I guess. Is that the right term to Ye- use? So I would say further? yes in a few weeks slash okay. months. I don't remember when it starts. Okay. So right now, so like, I would say it's actually not at all. But they are they do these seasons that I actually didn't know existed. Diablo mm-hmm. 3 did this as well, where you make a seasonal character that goes away after a season. So you make a character huh. specifically only for that season to produce to progress a seasonal quest and a battle pass that okay. you you keep the stuff that you gain, I guess, in like a, in somewhere. But the character mm-hmm. goes away. That to me, not not appealing at all. That sounds awful. I don't want to like you make, you know, make a character, you know, like the yeah. play style and then just lose them. Mm-hmm. I, I get people's. Uh, the opposite perspective where it's like well that's diablo you make a character from fresh you yeah get gears. that's what's I, fun about it i understand the reasoning not for me yeah not not for right. me if i could use my character to progress stuff i i probably would come back but i am not from scratch making these characters to then do now nah, none that's not that's not me do it all over again essentially yeah yeah i yeah. will make new characters as in like a rogue but i don't want mm-hmm. them to go away because i want to be able to come back to them so like yeah, kind of like what Destiny does. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought I could go on the app. I guess I can't since it's technically not a PC game you can play. That's fine. It's I want to say, video. if I had to guess, 40, probably. Okay. All right, 40 hours. Fine. I probably have more total playtime um, because I've played with other people. I play with my dad and my mm-hmm. close friend, Alex, former co-host wow. of the show, actually uh on the other two other characters but if i had to guess my main character because i did a lot of like the strongholds you know there's like bases and stuff you can do and i grinded a uh, bit i could pr- I'd probably say like 30 to 40 hours somewhere around there okay how long to beat has it at 22 hours in length uh, yeah and and length. i would say because i oh i did everything in them well not everything in the map sorry i like unveiled the map like mm-hmm. i could see it all so that I that definitely took at least an eight extra eight hours to to do. Okay, all right. That's uh, that's not as bad as I thought. No, no, it's not. It's not that long. You could probably do it way faster. I just took my time. Right. Uh, I had one more game. Um. Oh, you know, playing more Marvel Snap. I'm always playing that oh, in the yeah. background oh, on my phone. So good. I mean, it's ridiculous. So they released this conquest mode. That Got the short, the long and short of it is, it's very addicting. It, it's pretty much you win one game, you get a ticket to the next tier. Then you have to win two games, you get a ticket. Now you're on the next tier. You have to win three games, then you get a ticket for the biggest tier. That means you have to win five games. That only opens at the last week of the season. However, I, you essentially you essentially have health. So yes, it, you yes. have rounds. Mm-hmm. And that goes away. That. And it's like poker, just like the regular snap where like you can... You know, you can bluff and say like, oh, no, I'm confident winning. You can snap mm-hmm. for more health for the round for winning. Yep. There's high stakes around where instead of losing one around, you lose two around. And snap is a very, 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 very good game. Very good. They're in a little bit of a controversy right now because of how they're doing cards and these things. I don't blame people for being mad. I don't really care too, too much because I, ha- I I've played enough to where I have a pretty much all the cards that I feel like I need to oh. win. I've hit infinite. So like extra cards to me would just be like more you know like more What's fun to have um so if you remember <clears throat> they have series so mm-hmm. um for people who don't know there's pool one two three four and five each pool has a set amount of cards four and five are always new cards 
that come out and they can drop in rarity. So for instance, let's say uh, uh, there's a big bad in pool five. That, that's Galactus. That's always going to mm-hmm. be pool five, but a new card, for instance, uh, spider ham from the new movie, spider verse uh, into the spider verse. That's a new card that starts in series five. Normally not technically right now, but let's just pretend that's usually a series five card. You have to spend a certain amount of currency that you only earn in game, or you can earn via specific bundles that you buy but you can buy the cards there so what they did was they locked some of the cards from series into series four from going to series three because uh, what was their reasoning because of how strong they were so they didn't go down how they were supposed to so now it it only costs it, it always costs a specific amount of tokens but the issue was and I don't understand why they would do this because it's just free hate for the game. They did mm-hmm. that be- and they did a very specific bundle like a week and a half later. That was for one of the cards that they held back and it was for 30 bucks. So you could. So it looked like they held gotcha. back a card and then said, well, if you want it, pay $30 in two weeks. Gotcha. So that made okay. a lot of people mad. I, I Again, I say, like, I understand that's just optically bad, especially since mm-hmm. you're literally paying $30. So you're paying half of a brand new game on a digital card in a you know digital game. I understand why people could be upset about that. Uh, yeah. Personally, again, although I think it is bad optically and shouldn't have done it, I don't care. I'm not I'm not spending the thirty dollars. So I, I voted with my wallet. Let's see you know, yep. if others you did. Yep. Uh, but I think that's it. Yeah, more Diablo, Zelda. Oh, I did start Final Fantasy 16. Don't want to. I, I really stayed radio dark on Final Fantasy 16 as much as I possibly could because I just did not want any aspect of the game spoiled. So I will treat everyone else just like that. All I say is so far, it's good. That's all I'll say. Let's start rumor around it. Images of the newest Call of Duty, which is due out this year, has surfaced by known leaker Cod underscore Perseus, showing the remaster maps from the original Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer Termino and Scrapyard will be in the game. This was all uh, via Indecide... Sorry, let me start that over. This was all via Insider Gaming and Tom Henderson specifically, which is one of the most trustworthy sites in terms of leaks. And as a reminder, this was leaked a few months ago. Here are some key dates for the game. I will read them one last time for you. Now, this game will be revealed in August. So just in another little bit of a month and a few weeks, we will see the game. And here are some key dates for you. The beta weekend for the game, this will be only for PS4 and PS5, will be October 6th to the 10th. The second beta weekend will be for all platforms the game will release on. That will be October 12th to the 16th. The campaign early access, meaning when you have to pay like a $100 version of the game, you get the campaign two weeks early if it's just like how the previous game was. This will be on all available platforms November 2nd. The full release for the game will be November 10th, so that means it's only eight days of exclusivity this time. And then the Season 1 launch and a new Warzone map will be December 5th. Very similar to last year's release dates. Uh, Cool. I didn't see the images because they were already down by the time I went there. Didn't feel like looking for them. I can picture the maps. I've seen them. I played them when they originally were out. Modern Warfare 2, they are very good maps. I'm very happy to see that. I do always play my Call of Duties, especially the modern... It's funny I'm saying this. The modern Modern Warfare games that have come out. They are very good, so I will be there day one for this game. Do you care about any of this? Uh, it's interesting because every time uh, this new Call of Duty that's coming out this year pops up, I always remember them saying, hey, we're not doing a new Call of Duty next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. So, well, they didn't. Technically, oh, God, it's I so complicated. Was, so I, I Jason was... Schreier came out and said there is no new Call of Duty in this year. Then it changed. Gotcha. They were marketing it as a new Call of Duty game. Okay. And he was saying like, okay, well, it's going to come out, but it's going to be marketed as a new game. It's not. It's an expansion. Now it's changed to where they're going full in saying, no, it's, it's a full it's game. A We've added game. the campaign. Yeah. We've added a the multiplayer. There's going to be new maps. There's going to be new Warzone. So I don't know what witchery they were able to do to make all that reliable. I believe Jason Schreier. I believe at some point there was probably not going to be a Call of Duty. 
what they did to get this to work. I don't know. Maybe they changed they some people do. to their desks it's, and made sure that they, they didn't leave. Do. Maybe they incentivized via money and saying, hey, you know, some overtime hours. And, uh, you know, you... so I'm not sure. But this was this was even more impressive than their usual stuff, because at some point, it not far from the release, like a year left from releasing yeah. the game, there was not going to be one. Right. Then they made a full one within that time frame. Now, is it going to be content complete is the question. I don't know. That's something we won't know until the game's out. It's it's weird for me because Call of Duty is no longer uh, is the one game where I think of, yeah, they release a campaign, but who's really playing the campaign? Ah, me. Like, <laughs> I, me. I would say one out of ten people are playing I, the campaign. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. That's what you mean. I thought you meant yeah, specifically. Yeah. No, like, no, I, mean, I, I, yeah. I agree. No, sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I cut you off there. Yeah, no, I agree. No one's playing the campaign. Like, the greater audience who's buying the game, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess it's cool. Uh, I don't know. I think <laughs> what they really need to do is... Uh, to, for some reason, they continue to put Warzone and Call of Duty and Call of Duty multiplayer in the same hub, and mm. it just needs to be stopped. Just put Call of Duty and Warzone separated as a new as a, as a different SKU. They and they almost kind of do that now. There's almost like a half step because they do have Modern Warfare as a separate SKU, but it's not technically because like it still launches in like a player yeah. that shows you like the yeah. recent games. It is very strange. And then they'll say like download these other games, which I understand free advertisement for your other products. I understand why they do it, but it is it's... weird that they have done this like half in half out thing. Like they have. Mm -hmm. They have changed their marketing to where it's like one platform now and it's Warzone, but they haven't because they still charge you the same amount. They still make you pay for it. Technically, the only difference is they don't make you pay for a map pack season pass thing. They just make you yeah. pay for the game and then you have to pay for the season pass for Warzone to get X gun thing, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here for it, I guess. I'll play oh. for a week and then drop. That's how I do it. I pretty much pay for like a week or two. If it's really good, I play for like three to three weeks to a month. Really mm -hmm. get into it, and then I leave and go play Destiny. <laughs> That's generally mm -hmm. how it works. Let's start the show for the week. Now, this is going to be deep, deep Microsoft talk. We're going to be starting on a specific Twitter thread that I scalpeled from Steven Totillo specifically. There's going to be a couple things where we can't really dig deeper. There wasn't really a point of doing a write-up. So we're going to be reading from this kind of Twitter thread that he pieced together. Then we're going to go to my write-up about the entire situation around the FTC that happened today. We're going to have a great time. Now, it's a lot here. Starting with the first. So among the exhibits Microsoft and Activision want to use in their defense against the FTC, three including... Activision executives discussing Steam, Nintendo, and Game Pass cannibalization of sales. Very interesting. I'm sure no one is shocked when you hear Game Pass cannibalizing sales. Of course, it cannibalizes sale because it's Netflix. So, like, why why buy the DVD when I think it's going to come to Netflix in two months, right? It's the similar thing we all went through with Netflix. The exact same thing we hear now. I don't know if you want to quickly add to this, Ruben, before I move on. I am sorry. I did not hear anything you said i just saw the first uh thing of steven totillo's the thread and it's the the headline for the first <laughs> is just insane i'm sorry what did you say no you're good you're good so pretty much the first part of this is game pass ca cannibalization of sales right oh yeah yeah which not sure. makes sense but no of course not shocking at all you gotta Let's, do what you gotta do of course. And and Game Pass, although I'm sure makes them money, you are eating money in the back end because your games aren't going to sell as much. Exactly. Let's see here. That's not important. Activision executive review of Stadia. So there was a, a full on review email attachment of Stadia that they probably um, are going to fully read. Of course, a lot of this is redacted and we can't actually see this, but we're able to see the exhibit title. So that's always interesting. Um, there's a 2020 Microsoft email uh, called multiple stores on Xbox. Very interesting what that means. Now, that could be something incredibly trite, like 
movies, TV shows, and games being technically different stores, but it's being used in this specific exhibit. It's being used as legal information, meaning it has got something juicy in there. Of course, we've always discussed that Game Pass could exist on other platforms, like PlayStation yeah. and Nintendo. I'm curious if this was a strategy to try and get another bigger company or publisher onto your platform to sell stuff. Uh, this is pretty funny. Uh, some sort of 2019 forward to Xbox executive replied, quote, pettiness from Sony and GameSpot's fanboy reviewers, That's end quote. Crazy. <laughs> That's what I was like, fat, like so caught off guard. The, the, no, 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 yeah. Mostly yeah. the GameSpot's, pe- the GameSpot reviewers. Yeah. Is what caught me off guard. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So, and what's funny is, Totillo adds, not sure what the deal was with GameSpot, but they did give Gears 5 a 7 earlier that month. Which? I I, w- I would say I they are... Okay, hold on. back. Let me back up before I say what I was going to say. I'll word this a little more intricately. They are still human, so I don't blame them for being angry about that. It's pretty funny that they called GameSpot <laughs> reviewers fanboys. Fan that, is <laughs> that is very funny. I think what it is... For me, it's Gears 5, Halo Infinite, they're the same. Well, let me not say Halo Ooh, Infinite. I was about Gears to say, 5, what are we doing here? Gears 5, Halo 5, you can look back at the first games. Okay. Uh, Gears 1 and Halo 1, they're the same game. Mm, okay. So, like, it, I dropped off Gears 5. I, only, I think I only played Gears 3. I dropped off. Uh, yeah, it was a fun time. Did I want to play Gears of War 4? No, I didn't because I already played the game, you know? Like, there's nothing more appealing to coming back to it. Now, I will say, you know, God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok, yes, they're the same game. Uh, you uh, Uncharted 1 through 4, yeah, they're the same game, but it's the story that brings me back. Final Fantasy, I can't really say Final Fantasy is the same game, but there's nothing driving me to to play Gears 5. There's no story that looks insane mm. that I want to go back to playing Gears 5. So, that's all I'll say. I do, of course you are your own person, but that does shock me a bit, saying how down you are in Gears 5, and I think you're not the only person. I don't think people were very much like Gears 5. I actually adored Gears 5 specifically. There's a couple aspects. Narratively, I would actually dock it um, if I mm. was actually like a reviewer. A 7 does seem a bit low for me. I'm not a big review score guy, so I don't necessarily care. Uh, just to give a bit context, um, the original writer of the Gears 5 review was Phil Hornshaw. I have no idea who that is. I don't know if he is quote-unquote a fanboy. I would doubt that if he is a paid reviewer of a major website but i do not know the man so i'm not going to pretend like i can judge either way what he is to add um go go ahead i was just going to say the the kind of lines up the highest i see here uh on open critic ign gave it a 9 out of 10 pc gamer gave it a 78 out of 100 uh, easy <laughs> allies 8 out of 10 games radar plus 4 out of 5 Came Informer eight point five out of ten. Okay, so that yeah. but that so they are the lowest though. Everyone you named is almost pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty but much is higher than that. It's not just Gamespot that gave him a, a seven out of ten. Metro of course, Game Central, PC Gamer technically counts as it's a technically. Yeah, I agree. Very close to an eighty. Again, I'm I. When we get to numbers, it's so annoying when we have to like, yeah. oh, this is not a seven. It's an eight. I hate it. It's annoying. Wish we could just talk about games, but that's not the reality we live in. So I'll quickly add that. Although weird that they gave it a seven, it is their prerogative. I understand if they don't like GameSpot. I mean, if I released a game and I thought it was a nine and someone gave it a seven, I'd be mad too. Should you be doing right. that in official company emails? That's pretty no, bold of you. Probably pretty bold. Not. Pretty yeah. bold. <laughs> yeah. Now. Can you say that in the contents? Sure. Do you put that in the forward? That's probably no. where, where you messed up. Probably don't put that. I in wouldn't. Need, I would probably go as far as to say as yeah. Probably don't call a, a, a review a, a place that reviews your games fanboys 
in company emails, company yeah. phones. No, you say that in to somebody's face. Yeah, you just in confidence. That. Be like, hey, yeah. Did you see that review? Bullshit. Also, I will add. People sleeping on Gear 6. I understand you don't like it, so you're fine. But that was a very good game. It was very good. Give it whatever score you want. I don't care. I'm just saying other people should try it. I feel like that was kind of slept on as Gear 6. Gears 5 also. Those are two okay. good games. I, I, I hate that people don't very much like them. Now, up, but, of course, I don't blame them. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that, like I said, there was nothing pulling me back into the story mm, to okay. play them. Gears That's 4, true. 5, or 6. That's true. That's true. I, I, I guess... I would have to replay them, but yeah, they don't do anything entirely new narratively. Gear six does, but you have to beat the game to to know that. Right. Uh, let's see here. Follow up on da, 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 from uh, that's probably nothing. May twenty twenty two email from Phil Spencer to Jim Ryan reply. Follow up on content discussions, and there's another in August. Interesting on what that is. I'm trying to think of the time frame. That could have just been more Activision Blizzard stuff. Uh, to yeah. further cement, hey, by the way, uh, we're going to put it there. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal, et cetera. Yeah. So the the second one from uh, 826, 2022, it says uh, uh, Microsoft's commitment to Activision games on PlayStation post merger. So, yeah, yes, I see that. I see that right here. Yep. December 2022 email replied Xbox Game Stores to Switch. Studios. Xbox oh, I'm sorry. Studios. Why did I say? Titles. What did I? Did I say stores? You did say stores. Jesus Christ. I think that's what you also said before. What is it really? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Xbox game stores. <laughs> also, one in January 23. Xbox game studios. Titles to PlayStation and Switch. This is something that I've always theorized that might be the end game to Microsoft. Slash Phil Spencer slash, you know, whoever you want to point to. Yeah, I think the win is get PlayStation or sorry, get Game Pass on PlayStation, get Game Pass on Switch. I think that is the I imagine the end go the end goal breaks all barriers. Make sure all your games are going everywhere and you get to reap the benefits of. Uh, over 100 million people, if you're on both platforms, like that's a lot of ice on all your stuff, so. This is interesting because most people would go to, yeah, get Game Pass on Switch, get Game Pass on PlayStation. I see it as we already put Minecraft on Switch. We already put Minecraft on PlayStation. Right. Why don't we just do it with the rest of our games? Mm. Get Halo 5. or Halo Halo's a bad one. But <laughs> Avowed. Yeah. Let's put it on PlayStation. You do Let's lose your on... leverage. Yeah, you, but you don't want the cut. You want your you want the subscription service. They don't care about the money from the game. They want the money coming out of your wallet every month. Right. But at the same time, like you said before, when we were talking about Game Pass subscriptions, like, yeah, right. they're losing money. They could have sold this game at 70 bucks, but you're getting it at fifteen ninety nine. Right. So like this is potentially a way to offset the costs. Or mm. offset the, the, you know, get more gains. I, and Which there I was always, see. there was always rumors that they actually tried to get the Master, Master Chief collection on PlayStation. Yeah. Um, I've only heard <laughs> that specific rumor. I haven't heard any other details why it fell through, what, you know, what, what they wanted. But I don't, I don't, you're not saying anything wrong. Like, I agree with your general thought process. The only thing yeah. I would add is, the reason they can't do that is they want Game Pass. Once they give you no. the game, they've lost the reason to put Game you Pass. You are absolutely, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely okay. right. And I think, especially for the Master Chief Collection, I think that's the only one that they would probably do because Sony f focuses so heavily on story. Yeah, yeah. The Halo Master Chief Collection has a story, but it, it it's really a shooter. So we yeah, should people want the a shoot exactly, which would be so interesting. Often. It would be very interesting. It, that's why I I would love to know. Was, there's no yes. way for me to know, but I would love to talk to Phil and be like, "What's yeah. the what's the ten year plan?" You know, they they love execs love that term. What's the ten year plan? What's your five year plan? You know, mm -hmm. what do you want to see? Oh, they love it. They love talking about it. I'm very very curious. I imagine the ten year plan is Game Pass is like fifteen bucks a month, and we're on every platform like. I imagine it's somewhere in that 
space. I I know they wanted um there was uh oh my god, how did we know this? There was like a rumor or something a long time ago that they wanted Xbox Live on on Switch and they kind of yeah. do sort of with Minecraft kind of, but like not really. Uh, I could totally see Game Pass going to Switch. And it will happen to Switch like, before PlayStation. I think. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But Nintendo's like, all right, well, we'll do this, but you guys have to help us fix our online. Yeah, I could definitely see a, you know, scratch my back, I scratch yours. Because yeah, yeah, it is shocking that Nintendo still has that bad of an online. Like it's pretty, that's pretty shocking for a company that it, values their products so highly. Like I played Tears of the Kingdom, I didn't encounter one single bug. I'm gonna say that again. 2023 i played a video game that was brand new without a single bug not one not a single time did the game act up in any way i didn't fall through the earth i didn't you know jump and it launched me in the air nothing yeah but they don't Um, care about their online that's so weird i think nintendo sees themselves as a, a company that yeah we have online but we don't focus on it yeah yeah, most of our games, Pokemon is the one uh, I think of the most. Yeah, Pokemon has online functionality, but this is a game where you play on the couch. Like yeah, you, you're yeah. you're not playing online. You're playing on the couch. You're you're doing it. It's kind of the Sony thing where we focus on single player story game. Well, single pl- single player games. We don't focus on multiplayer online. It's pretty much everything from the thread that we we could cover. Uh, of course, the most interesting tidbit being that Xbox Game uh, Studios on other platforms, Xbox Game Stores. Yes. Oh, I said ge- that GameSpot reviewers are fanboys. Oh, that's probably that's yes. That's actually the best. That's, that's probably the best thing. I I love that. I love that Phil was involved yeah. in that. That means and I'm an Xbox fan. I don't mean this as a fanboy. It's always fun for any executive to see that kind of human, right? Like that's mm-hmm. and to me that's very human. You know, anger is a very human response, of course. That that's that's always nice to see. But again, I will say maybe don't maybe don't title the email that way. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't title it. I, I'm with. I'm not going as far as don't say it at all. You know, you do you. Yeah, but let's not title the, the email GameSpot. The family. email. Although, yeah. if they followed our advice, we would never would have seen this. So I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. Now, this is when it gets a bit long. Sarah Bond, Xbox vice president, took the stand today as a recording to testify in court concerning the FTC blocking of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard King purchase. We all saw quite a few things come to life. Chief among them, and I think the most interesting thing out of this, arguably the most interesting out of this entire Activision Blizzard discussion since the very beginning, was that Bobby Kodak once threatened to not release Call of Duty on Xbox if the revenue share for their game was not increased. Just to fill in, for those who do not know, the standard revenue share, almost everyone who ships their game on any of the big three platforms has a standard 730 split favoring the developer and publisher of the game. Now, it is not uncommon to have special contracts to have uh, the share smaller at certain points throughout their sales milestones, but this does show Activision was throwing their weight around considerably and making Xbox give them a reason to ship on their platform. Of course, Sarah Bond and Xbox agreed to whatever the new share was. We do not know what that new new share was. And let me expand before I throw it to you, Ruben. Just because I do want people to understand the revenue share uh, specific part of this development. So if you are a mom and pop game, you're releasing, you know, mom and pop uh, dancer 2.5 on Xbox. You're going to get that 730 split. I think they do have a special split at with specifically ID at Xbox and they have special incentives for game pass and all the things. I'm not talking about that. Just the standard 730 split. You get 70% of the sales. They get 30%. Now there are certain developers. Let's say Ubisoft, you know, the big names that they'll do cascading shares in a special Mm. contract. So they'll say, let's say like, Oh, you know, you'll get, uh, we'll do 80, 20 on the first 2 million, uh, and then we'll do 75 
uh, 25 on the first uh, 10 million, you know, and, and you know, you can picture that there's kind of like a ladder uh, milestone to you'll get more of the money uh, with more of the early sales and they'll you'll trickle down as the sales go up pretty much. Right. This is interesting because they came to them and said, we want our shares higher. We're not going to release the game there, which is pretty ballsy saying you're going to give it to us. Now, we don't know technically how the revenue share started. We know 730 split is the most common. I yeah. highly doubt that was exactly how that specific Activision Blizzard thing uh, uh, revenue share was worked out. There is I will say with confidence, almost a zero chance that it was straight up a 730 split with no asterisks. There was probably something that means they wanted probably even more of the share than they already probably had with whatever specific contract they had prior. Very interesting. What did you think about this development? Take it however you want with Activision throwing their weight before they were purchased. Uh, maybe PlayStation incentivizing them to do this, saying, hey, maybe you get a little extra if you only ship on PlayStation this year. I don't know. Like, what, what do you think about any of this? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's PlayStation incentivizing them to, you know, just stay on the PlayStation side. Maybe yeah, there's a, nice you know, part. something in the contract. It's like, if you only release this, you get this amount yeah. of, the, you know, so it, it could be but, anything. But at the same time, Xbox knows that Call of Duty is a system seller, I would say. Yeah. Call of Duty sell systems. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people on Xbox that like, oh man, I don't really have, I got all this gamer school point, gamer score over here. I don't really want to start all over on PlayStation. So it's kind of like, yes, it was probably like I said, PlayStation. Like, yeah, just just stay on X on uh, PlayStation. We don't need to yeah. go to Xbox. But also, Xbox needed something to bring people to their platform. Oh yeah, and depending on what year this is, this let's say this yeah. was something like 2019 or something. Like, you didn't mm -hmm. got it. You ain't got anything else. So they had yeah. zero options, and that's actually um, it's interesting you bring that up because that is pretty much the argument the FTC brought up because they brought up that she did this, and they were like, okay, well, why didn't you say no? The of course the argument is well, I had to because I needed the game, and then the FTC goes, so you need Call of Duty on your platform is what you're saying. Yeah arguing that then you probably shouldn't buy Activision Blizzard because right. other people need Xbox or sorry, Call of Duty on their platform, which is yeah. a pretty fascinating argument. As far as I understand, the FTC she was pretty much was that she kind of I sorry to cut you off. I just said oh, she no, kind of good. fell into their their trap. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it was it was it was a very good argument. As far as I understand, <clears throat> the FTC didn't have a great day in court, but I imagine this was probably the biggest win specifically because you right. can literally point to one. It's like, well, there's literally no reason for you not to say no or mm -hmm. sorry to to give them that not, unless you need yeah. it on your platform, which then, right. you know, now, of course, we add a bunch of asterisks being like, well, PlayStation probably incentivized them to do that. Yes. Or maybe yeah, they exactly. didn't. But even if they didn't, they already had marketing agreements with them, which is something the FTC is arguing against Xbox. But. Mm -hmm. But not the other way around, because that's what PlayStation does, which is the like chief example of all these things. So that's when it yeah. gets very murky, and it's clear that the FTC doesn't really understand gaming that much. There is a bunch of different things. There is a bunch of funny questions. I don't know if you saw any of them on Twitter today. There was one where it's I like, saw this morning. Do you need a said... Windows key to stream games? And Sarah Bond just went, no. <laughs> like it was like, what do you? Oh god. <laughs> there was so it's... many. There was so many little things like that where. I was like, it wow, reminds they really me of, don't understand. It reminds me of when they had the uh, the guy from TikTok, the, the founder of TikTok, going to Congress and them, these yeah. congressmen, congress people just asking him these outrageous questions. So like, you're telling me you know my Wi-Fi name? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh, man. I, yeah. I just wish they... The FTC needs to like ask the common. I hate to say this, but the common gamer, which mm. I, I'm not a fan of that word. Yeah. I understand, understandable. Yeah, just just to see what their input is. Like, yeah. I think I don't know. I, I I don't trust Xbox when they say like, yeah. Well, why would we pull 
uh, why would we pull Call of Duty from PlayStation when we need to make the money back? We need to make that sixty nine billion dollars back. Yeah, but do. at the same time, you need to make the money back. Well, uh, I I forget how much the uh, the um, oh my god, how much they bought um, Bethesda. Yeah. Uh, it was around eight billion or so. Um, I'm probably missing a point okay. there, but it should have been right. around there. Okay, so it's not as as big, but no still, near. still, one would assume like, hey, we, I don't know, it it just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, we're gonna put Call of Duty out on PlayStation, but this new um, Starfield game, yeah, we're not putting that on PlayStation because we need the the exclusive. Uh, it was seven point five billion. So it's okay. Bit off. So not as but, as crazy as six. Nowhere years. near. Uh, this is actually one of the biggest gaming related acquisitions ever made by like a lot. So yeah, th- there's nothing close. Zynga was was going to be the biggest thing for about a week, and then they announced this. So yeah, uh, th- this this is insane. Funny that you brought up the Jim Ryan thing where he uh they bring up like you know you could take it away. Uh, I I do think the uh our argument is valid where. Z- Call of Duty is not going anywhere for a while. That's why they're so antsy to sign the 10-year deal. We're like, mm-hmm. trust us. We're not taking this off the biggest platform ever. Yeah. But. But. Once they have better footing in the market, zero chance they don't. I think in that 10-year cycle, once they're in a much healthier position, when they got game studios releasing games, Game Pass mm-hmm. is probably close to double the price. They're like... By the way, Call of Duty exclusive on Game Pass. You can only get on Xbox. Peace out, boys. Like I can definitely yep. see that. Then, and I've been arguing this since they started this. Then you have leverage saying, "Oh, you want Call of Duty? Oh, we'll give you Game Pass on PlayStation." Mm-hmm. Like, did, just imagine yeah. that argument. Like yeah. that is that is something where you have PlayStation by the figurative balls if yep. you can hold that. Now that argument falls apart. Because in 10 years, we have no idea what's going to happen. We, yeah, right. Activision could lose all of their talent and Call of Duty could suck. We don't know. Mm-hmm. PlayStation right. could already have a much better shooter and it sells better. Who knows? But yep. we don't know. So we have to go off like what we know now. And I do think it's very interesting that we do have to theorize like, would they take it away if they didn't? I really don't think they would. Because like you said, they have to make the money back. They they don't right. go. Uh, I fi- I, um, um, there was a I was watching. The interview of Todd Howard by Kind of Funny X Cast. It's a lot yeah. of words. Yes. And what's interesting was Gary Witta brought up uh, the the first Star Wars title had a lot of weight on it because the first Star Wars movie didn't cost four hundred million dollars. It cost mm. five billion dollars because we had to buy Star Wars. So like you have a lot of like pressure and you know similar to Starfield now similar to Call of Duty if this does go through like. Yeah, no, the, f- the first few Call of Duties don't cost $200, $300 million. They cost like triple, quadruple that because we have to factor in. We just spent six nine, $69 billion to do all this anyways. So now we have to recoup all that in the back end. Now, this is Microsoft. They piss this money, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I will say as a reminder, uh, the $7.5 billion, uh, they made that back in the next quarter. That's how much money we're talking about here. Like they made the money back in their next quarter. That is insanity. Yep. So we're not really working with a uh, pure company here. That they, they they have Windows. They have you know it's Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're course, a giant. So we can't yes. really compare them to anyone else because like Xbox could lose a billion a year. It would be right. nothing. Nothing to them. I just feel like you gotta give a little to get a little of you course know what I'm saying? Yeah, i agree you you should have put my thought is you should have put starfield on playstation you should have put starfield on pretty much anything that could run starfield they to would show uh, i i un- completely understand why they didn't and of course I, all of them you know all kudos to them for not doing it but you got, like I said, you got to give a little to get a little. I so I think they would have if they knew they were buying Activision Blizzard when they announced the game. You're telling me that Phil Spencer didn't think that he was buying Activision? 
Yeah, as far as I understand, the the purchase plan happened very quickly, which is incredibly, and I'm with you, which is incredibly uncommon. Of course, I'm going off rumors. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. But apparently, they walked up. Uh, Microsoft approached them, which is cra which is crazy to think about. And amidst yeah, the really. giant sexual, is it like you would think? Um, Blizzard was trying to sell around that time because of yeah, their giant all the more reasons. The yeah, giant harassment. All the more losses. reason for. Microsoft to come in and be like, "Hey, we'll save your ass out. Of, we'll get your agreed. ass out of the fire." No, so that is agreed. That's kind of like two sides of the same coin. So I, I think yeah. I am kind of arguing against myself with that specific line. But um, back to the the original point, um, they 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 went to them in a time of crisis to try and bail them out. So mm -hmm. I don't think they had that plan in the back, and we're like, "Oh well, I mean, we already said it's exclusive. We can't change it because." that could be viewed as illegal. Like if we, cause like, it's, you know, things like this in discovery come out, it's like, wait, it was exclusive. And then you made it multi-platform. Why did you do that? And it's like, well, to, you know, you can't say to make us look better. So, and, and there's, well, it's hard to say any of this because anything could be reality. So like, it's yes. hard. It, it, I'm just guessing here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so am I. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> No, go ahead, um, please. You had a point. No, I was just going to say it, it's funny how I, I think Phil Spencer had, like you said, the, 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 those executives, they love their five-year, they love oh, their 10-year plans. It. Love it. I'm pretty sure, even if uh, Activision Blizzard didn't have the shit show that is the, their HR stuff oh, happening. So much. They were, <laughs> they were bound to... Uh, acquire somebody whether it be activision blizzard whether it be could have been ea it could have been yeah. any number of people you know I, i'm actually surprised that we haven't heard anything from microsoft saying like hey you know uh oh my god i'm trying to blank on who that that huge company that uh thq is the uh, embracer group um, Embracer Group. I'm surprised Microsoft hasn't said, "Hey, <laughs> if you want to unload some studios, come on, we'll send you some money." They they probably would if they weren't in the middle of this. And that yes. also is yeah. they're also one of the contenders that backed out of the deal, whatever the Embracer Group deal was. Oh, they were set for a two billion cash flow, and that they yeah. left last minute. Who knows who it was? But I mean, okay, okay, okay. Who okay. has two? But but the but the theory is like, who has two billion? There's only so many people in the game industry who can just blow two billion into somebody. Nintendo, Xbox, maybe oh, you think it was EA. Games related. I don't think it was it games could, related. It could. I thought it, it could have been Saudi Arabia. It, that's that, that's a good money. point. It could have been the public yeah. investment fund, which is yep. that's gross. But it could have been. Um, it could have yeah. been so many people. So like. It's really hard to guess. That's why I only really stick to gaming and like trying to theorize right, crazy right, examples. Because right, 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 right. that, my, for some reason, my immediate thought was Nintendo. I really don't know why, but I was like, maybe Nintendo to get like some sort of investment back, and maybe this is like in good faith or something. I don't know, but I, I have no idea who did that. And also, like, shocking that they backed out, like, in literally the eleventh hour. Like, he, that yeah. guy was notified the night of, and woke up yep. and went, "What?" <laughs> yeah. So. That's pretty great. shocking. Yeah. Oh, great conversation. Thank you for coming on, Ruben. Yeah, no problem. Another matter broached was the limited marketing rights they had to advertise Call of Duty coming to Xbox. This is an even more common marketing strategy, and it's something PlayStation has done a lot of in the past decade. Things like Xbox couldn't outright say the game was coming to the Xbox on anything other than official Xbox sources. So, for instance, uh, Sarah Bond specifically brought up, it's like, well, we had a showcase and we wanted to make a giant list of all the games coming to Xbox. They could not put Call of Duty on there because of that specific licensing um agreement <clears throat> sorry marketing agreement that a, a call of duty slash activision had with playstation mm -hmm. that they pretty much wouldn't advertise going to any other platform but of course they would still launch on those other platforms right. which is something like i said increasingly more common with playstation xbox does this but a much smaller degree to the point where they have uh we saw this with the showcase they do this a lot where the game's announced, but they can't say it comes to any platforms for it seems like 48 hours. Sometimes it's like a week-ish. And then yep. they're like, oh, we're coming to everything else, by the way. Uh, I don't really have too much to add to this, Ruben, aside from 
play this is kind of playstation's demo they love locking down things we see that with final fantasy 16 right now to an even more degree where they're grabbing the entire game from the other platform uh, and and just paying them straight out to only launch on playstation did you have anything to add here I would just say in the words of Phil Spencer and the gaming leadership team, pettiness from Sony. <laughs> Take a big old sip of water about spit it all out. That was very funny. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, th- that's uh, to be expected. It's Sony. Like like we said before, Call of Duty sells a crap ton of yeah. PlayStations. PlayStation is the place to be when you want to play a, a Call of Duty um yeah i i'm not surprised by that at all and we'll be going back to the console share in a bit uh quote unquote him the xbox losing the console wars very interesting discussion there to have in a second sarah also had to confirm that there was no way currently to bring call of duty to switch as sony and nintendo are both quote or sorry are quote both competitors and partners end quote uh pretty much their line of questioning was could Call of Duty go anywhere else other than the main platforms right now? Uh, she said no, because there's just it's not a way for that to happen. They have no incentive to launch on Switch because <clears throat> they have PlayStation to appease with, you know, all the marketing rights and exclusivity ish kind of things that they have. So also, why would they do that? Switch isn't and, powerful enough. And there you go. There's another reason why it hasn't launched there because it can't run on Switch. But of course, that's not the line of questioning that she wanted to do there. That was right, their right, side right. questioning her. So she was like, "Oh, you know, it can't currently go there now. So we're doing it, but you know, because we're good Nintendo, people." <laughs> but also, Nintendo doesn't have the online capabilities of running yeah, so a this, huge game that is Call of Duty. Multiple reasons why Call of Duty isn't on there, but of course, yeah. they want to try and spin it positively in their favor that they're of course. Only doing it for the good of their heart, and of course, Switch will go 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 everywhere. Right, else. of course, um, of course. But uh, I did find that interesting that that they did bring that up specifically, where it's like you know try to justify everyone else. You know, look, we're bringing it other places. Inter- very interesting, to say the least, I guess. I can't wait to see that first Call of Duty. Oh, Call if this goes through and we have to see Call of Duty looking like a potato on a Switch, oh my it would god! Just have to be. I'm assuming like. Technically, Call of Duty campaign is is a Call of Duty, right? Yeah, yeah, and so, they could bring it. Uh, so what I assume they would do is is make cloud versions and yeah. sell it that way. Which, in yeah. theory, might it might not look that bad, especially if we're only counting to the new Switch. Because by the time they get, you know, time to release a Call of Duty on the Switch, it's probably on the new system anyways. So eh, you might be years. able to squeeze out a little more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Two years. I, I I'm I'm saying. You know, they are on that two year cycle of uh, is it two years? I who think. is well, I, I'm, I'm is who Call is? of Duty. Call, Call of Duty is every year. The, 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 yeah, but the, the three teams have, I think, two years to make the game. Oh, the three. The, the Well, I the guess you can't really years. say that right now. Technically, the, the three teams had three years each, but that's a little more messy now because. Um, right. Because Sledgehammer. Oh, my God. Yep. Who was it? Yeah. Sledgehammer. Treyarch and Slammer. Yeah, completely imploded, and they like yep. apparently scrapped their entire game, which is like, yeah. which is kind of the first example of them failing, which is kind of impressive. It could like also 20. be they needed more time to. <laughs> this is the Call of Duty that's coming out this year. Yeah, gets that's a good point. Yeah, there's yeah, that's very very complicated, especially when you have to really think about the mm-hmm. machine that is Call of Duty of like. Once one cog is broken, that can send yeah. all the other ones like spiraling out and uncontrollably. A quick story to come out. Pete Hines took the stand. Of course, he is senior vice president of marketing for Bethesda Softworks. Stated that the upcoming machine games title Indiana Jones was originally going to be multi-platform, but post acquisition by Microsoft, they moved to focus on PC and Xbox as, quote, you're dealing with a licensor who is giving a ton of feedback on what you're making. It's going to add a ton of time to your scheduling. These agreements, you don't get to take as long as you want. You have a window of time in which you're going to release a game. You immediately have a clock that's ticking on you. Truthfully, we also kind of like the idea of embracing bringing it to Game Pass and how many players we could get there, end quote. Don't know if I completely agree with everything there, but of course, I think he is... He's telling the truth, probably, but I think he's stretching a little bit. I think they were heavily incentivized to bring uh, all of their games in-house to Xbox. Could be wrong there, but I highly doubt that 
they really cared about making it for the platforms. And it was probably honestly nice because they can only focus on two versions. They have to make sure mm-hmm. it works on a PC and an Xbox. So I imagine it was probably kind of nice when they were by because like, oh, thank God we can we can make half focus the on. amount of titles pretty much like exactly. we just focus on an Xbox and PC. Thank God. So now we move over to Matt Booty. Now, this was so interesting. I didn't want to do a write up because it would be kind of stealing too much from the article and I never want to do that. So we're going to be reading a little bit from Rebecca Valentine's article over on IGN. Microsoft admits Xbox has lost the console wars. So there's a couple of things here we're going to <clears throat> talk about. Of course, I don't read the entire article because I want you to go read it. We're only going to be reading a full snippets here. So make sure you go give them a click. This is the first quote I want to read. Quote, Xbox consoles have... Consi- oh, and of course, this is Matt Booty. I apologize. This is him taking the stand. This is one of his snippets from a article. Quote, Xbox's console has consistently ranked third of three behind PlayStation and Nintendo in sales. In 2021, Xbox had a share of 16%, while Nintendo and PlayStation had shares of redacted and redacted. Respectively, likewise, for console revenues and share of consoles currently in use by gamers' install base... Xbox trails with 21% while PlayStation and Xbox have shares of redacted and redacted respectively. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this supports the argument later on that Matt Booty pretty much has a whole thing that says like they've lost console wars because of these specific situations. I want to ask you this. Now, I always knew that uh, Xbox was quite behind. Uh, 16% of the market share and and with an install pace of 21% compared to the other players. And you have to imagine that the pie is probably much more closer from Nintendo to PlayStation than they are to Xbox in both categories. So we're mm. talking far, far, far behind. Because we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, if I had to guess here, we're probably talking like a 38 to like maybe low. 40s ish favoring playstation around there which means they are being walloped in in an incredible degree and there was always rumors that they were being outsold three to one they've never talked about xbox systems really since the 360 uh so it's probably true they're probably very close to being outsold three to one via playstation which is quite shocking to say the least is it though the, the, like they haven't like you said they haven't released the numbers of how many consoles have been sold for a while now uh i think this is what happens when you're like the, the last person to the race you end up this far behind agreed but they were such in a strong position with 360 this really shows how important that transition was because yes. they felt they fell behind so much to the degree that it might I'm not going to say impossible. Nothing really is impossible really ever in life, but they have fell behind so much that they are, they are bare. They're barely in the double digits. <laughs> like 16% so is some um, is, is an incredible. And that goes to show you that the PC play to make Xbox games on PC might've been out of pure survival, just yeah. a need for that game to happen has. versus PlayStation and all those things doing it kind of by choice. Game Pass in and of itself is the reason why, like, this is the reason why Game Pass exists. Because oh, yes. so far yeah. behind. Yeah. No, I, that's, a, and that's a, a great point to bring up, too. And to remind everyone, yeah, they've pretty much said, and Phil Spencer, I believe, himself said, we're trying to get people with content now because we can't yeah. get them. We've lost the library. We lost mm-hmm. Xbox One. We lost every single purchase from 2013 on is gone if you left xbox so now you you're not only on a playstation but you have history there you have your you have your fifth call of duty that you bought you have your random skate game or you know whatever insert whatever game that you buy friends there you you got your friends you got yeah you got that ignoring the purchases yeah you have friends you got you know there's a you have a a account there and Mm -hmm. it makes it less and less likely the more we go on that someone would leave. Yeah. I'm reminded of, um, particularly my situation where like 
let's say I sell my Xbox tomorrow and only play on PlayStation. That that would mean I would lose. If I had to guess 200 games, that's 200 purchases over my entire lifetime of having my Xbox from 2007, I think is when I got it or something. I don't remember when I got it. <clears throat> I, I can check my, my account. <clears throat> my first console was the Xbox 360. Um, so then... my my. What, what do you what do you say your first console like the first one like, you played? No, I mean like the first one I was able to buy for myself. Like before that, I was just a Nintendo kid that had just DS and all handheld. So I, I didn't had... technically buy a system until PS4 because I always got one for my birthday. Or what right, more right, commonly right. happened was my dad would give me his when he would right. upgrade or something. Mm-hmm. So that was actually more common, but it took me a very long time to actually buy with my own money because I would always just I would usually get a hand me down or something for right. Christmas or something. I remember getting my Xbox one specifically and and I told them I was like the year I was coming up because it was five hundred dollars. I was like, yeah, don't get me anything for my birthday, please. Like just this for Christmas. That's it. And I was like, don't get anything else. And and I remember my dad saying this. You're like, you know, that's half a thousand dollars. And I was like, yep. But can you do it? I was like, but, <laughs> but can you get it for me? So I they ended up getting it for me, but I, I'll never forget that. That was a great, great time. Although, of course, the Xbox One was an awful at launch. It it got much yes. better. Um I also bought the Xbox One at launch. Mm. And I bought it with my own money. I was very surprised. I had to, well, when I say my own money, I took out a credit card and I ah. bought it. Yes. And technically slippery your money slope. kind of. <laughs> slippery slope because I'm Barry. still paying that Xbox One off right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, but when I mean essentially my Xbox 360 was the first like actual console yeah. that I owned. Like I said before, I would always, I had Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy SP, um, Nintendo I DS. Yeah, I had all yeah, those. I had all of those, but my parents were strictly firm on, no, you're not getting a console because you need to focus on school. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There it my is. My parents were both teachers. So. Oh, yeah, wow. Like, well, we there know it what is. To do. Yeah, yeah, we know what's going on. So, no. Um, but yeah, I, I, this is what happens. Like I said before, this is what happens when you're, you decide to start the race when uh, Nintendo and X, uh, Nintendo and PlayStation are like three quarters of the way into the race. Yeah. You know, they've learned, they've grown, they have like, what's, what's probably the most interesting is they have knowledge, which is something you can't really buy unless you poach people. And that's not, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really gain it that way either. This is going all the way back and before even Xbox was made, like their approach was just let's just buy stuff and just hope for the best. And that's kind of what Microsoft's just been doing ever since they've entered the console market. It's just let's buy stuff and just hope for the best. That's yeah. the you know, they tried to I mean, going all the way back, they they I mean Halo's not even theirs. They technically bought that too. So that it's just it's so complicated when you're specifically talking about uh Xbox and how deep their mythology is of like just buying and <laughs> and the just how much 2013 was in just a complete disaster for yeah. e just everyone involved. It e just I just everyone involved in Xbox just completely just fell apart. Don Matrick just sent the ship to die. Yep. I just think of when everybody's whenever someone mentions 2013 to me, the, the first thing that pops into my head is Sony's. This is how we share. This games. is how we share games. Step one. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And then yeah. That's oh, the I never, only thing never that pops forget. up. Never forget, never forget seeing that E3. Oh, yep. I, I, I was so, it was so defeatist too to be an Xbox fan. I was so yeah. sad. I was like, oh my god, like, what? Why does it suck here? And then I almost bought it. And they, they, what's always funny is they, they walked back their DMCA thing, but like, they didn't really like. It's everyone still kind of does DMCA just in a different yeah. way than what was described. Yeah. Even PlayStation, it's not did as when bad. It launched. It's just not as, yeah, like you said, it's not as bad. It's not quite as strict. And they did this weird thing where they were pretty much like, we're going to put, put games, uh, GameStop out of business was pretty much their model was like, yeah, we're going to put exactly. them out of business because we're tired of sharing our money with them. OK, well, as we leave this, do you have any like leaving glance out of this con entire discussion before we move on to uh, 
a couple other news stories. What do you think is going to happen with the FTC? Do you think that Microsoft's going to win? Apparently, we're we're not even asking if they're winning. It's if they get a preliminary injunction. Apparently, ruins the deal because they don't hit the 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 deadline. Now, oh. I don't understand why they couldn't extend the deadline. I'm not a lawyer, so I I don't know if right. that's not allowed or you have to it's make a new deal. Or, yeah, so, yeah. but I I when they say they if the deal goes through if. The deadline's not met. I'm like, well, can't, can't you? Which I guess you can't because no one's made the argument why they won't just do that. So I just assume you can't. Um, so that's just that's that's the game they're playing. If they get the preliminary, if they are they get the preliminary injunction from the SEC, that's done. So razor thin. The FTC, I think, is a lot of show right now. Mm-hmm. They're just kind of showing that they're they're right. kind of squeezing them. I do not think they're going to get much substance out of this. Uh, the CMA was a good example of the, someone actually saying no when everyone would say they would say yes. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, I'm not really behind a lot of people who are out there giving their like thoughts and like what's going to happen because they've been wrong a lot. So I've just kind of been going off what I think. And what I think is I do not think the FTC will do the preliminary injunction. I think they're just going to let it happen and just they made their case. It's clear they don't really know what they're talking about. It's clear that Jim Ryan didn't care enough to go there. So he, so it's not a winning enough battle from them because he just made a video and sent it to them. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's that said a lot because they don't see it. They don't see a winning avenue from them. So they didn't even show up really. Like that's that's the equivalent of 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 sending an email. <laughs> like you know, like I think for, it's for a trial hearing. For Sony's part, I think it's like it's the, it's a lost case. We'll just I'll send a, a video. I and what's funny is I don't know if you saw this today. Jim Ryan, his a uh, couple of his leaked emails came out and was like, we don't. They'd never expected at one point that Microsoft wouldn't actually launch it on their platform. They yeah, knew I they always that. would, yeah. which is hilarious. And again, I'm not a legal guy, but wasn't wouldn't that technically be lying? And isn't that against the law? I don't. Again, not was he not a legal guy. Question. But uh, but I found that interesting too. And that to me is the most telling thing that they didn't even show up because they they flew Jim Ryan to Brussels mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> when they did the uh, CMA hearing, but they didn't this time, and that's closer. So I don't think. I think they they know it's it's a lost cause and they're like we delayed it long enough that's going to go through they're probably yeah. pretty positive it will they're going to move on and focus on them probably. Yep. All right. This is a little thing. I I don't think it really affects us much. Uh EA announced that they're going to be splitting pretty much two avenues of their organizations uh and they're going to be splitting them I think for some political sake, for specifically the CEO, Andrew Wilson, <clears throat> this is from their actual website, reads as this. Today we are announcing the next step of our strategy by aligning our studios into two organizations that report to me, EA Entertainment and EA Sports. EA Sports. It's in the game. It's in the game. This evolution of our company continues to empower our studio leaders with more creative ownership Financial accountability to make faster or more insightful decisions around development and go to market strategies. These steps will accelerate our business drive growth and deliver long term value for our people, our players and our communities. If I read any more of that corporate jargon, I might vomit. So I will end there. Uh, I read through some of this. I don't see how this really changes anything for any of the average gamer. If you're a fan of EA at all, I don't think this really matters. I I think think this is just I think this is just a. This will help communication via their organization, which is good if you know you like EA and like you want them to make better projects, because it does look like it's actually better organized because they yeah. have these two avenues of like, hey, you know, here's our sports, pretty much our sports team, and this is our entertainment team, like, and we're able to kind of differentiate that, and it's probably much easier to read and and such and such. Yeah, I, I think it's like you said, it, it, it's help more helpful than anything. Uh, you don't have the this is just me thinking off the top of my head. You don't have the same person, one person 
uh working at ea entertainment that's also doing ea sports stuff yeah you know this probably helps a lot with that too yeah yeah uh quickly to add it again doesn't seem to change vince ampella will be leading uh the entertainment it looks like uh portion of ea sports and then samantha ryan will remain focused on lifestyle franchise and blockbuster single player experiences Jeff Karp will continue to lead mobile positioning. So it looks like EA Entertainment. Sim- Vince Sampella will lead Apex Legends, Star Wars games, and Battlefield. Samantha Ryan will go to their blockbuster single players, like pretty much everything else that Vince won't do, apparently. Jeff Karp yeah. does mobile games. EA Sports is headed by the president of EA Sports, Cam Weber. Yeah, I have a guy that does mobile games i have a guy that does sports games i have a guy that is kicking ass and taking names yep and and when you put it that way this makes a lot of sense yeah all right we're done with all that now moving on to the nintendo direct oh boy oh boy indeed now i will read some of these some of these i'll stop some of these i won't if i seem to be going on and you would like to stop and discuss something just let me know. There's a couple of these games, though, of course. I will have nothing to add. So just let me know mm-hmm. if the, if I'm moving on. You're like, oh, you know, let's talk about that. Starting with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLCs, Teal Mask, Indigo Disc. They showed that off a little bit. I popped when I saw Metagross because he's my guy. Aside from that, uh, they didn't give us a date, so I don't care. Uh, I was like, oh, well, there's no date. So, like, why would you show me this? Detective Pikachu is going to be October 6th. I don't get Detective Pikachu, if I'm being honest. It's just not me. I don't get it either. Okay, cool. I I, I saw this, and I'm like, so, like, are people excited? Because <laughs> this looks weird. I didn't know Detective Pikachu was a thing when uh, until the movie was announced. Yeah, it was like a 3DS game, then it was a movie, and now they're bringing another game. I don't know. And you're talking to the guy that is the probably the biggest Pokemon fan in the world. I didn't right. know Detective Pikachu was a thing. <laughs> That's, that is quite the statement. <laughs> Yeah. Sonic Superstars was shown off just you know, just quite a little bit. Now, I'm not a Sonic guy. This game looks awesome. I think I'm yes. actually going to play this. But they also confirmed one thing that we didn't get from uh, SGF, that this is going to be couch co-op only. There's no way in hell that this is going to be able to run online co-op. Ah, oh, yeah, I missed that. Wow, yeah. thank you for catching that for me. No problem. So, of course, single player and couch co-op. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, to be oh. clear, this is what I'm assuming from the the, the trailer said couch co-op. Only. It did. Well, That's a good point. Let me rephrase. The, the the trailer said couch co-op. It didn't say anything about online. So I'm assuming that there's no online co-op. Mm. That would make wouldn't sense. wouldn't make any sense. The latency would be ridiculous. It would be, and especially for a Sonic game, do you really want to see it's your a, guy teleporting you across go the fast. screen? Gotta, you go, gotta, fa- go, fast. gotta go, I gotta go fast. I'm sorry. You look like a ghost. I can't go this slow. I can't go this slow. <laughs> Palia. All right. Eh. Persona 5 <laughs> Tactica's coming to Switch. I think interesting. Uh, what what uh, like the game or it's coming to Switch? Just uh, the game. Uh, I I haven't played Persona 5. Well, I haven't played any of Persona games. I was told as a big JRPG guy I should oh, be yeah. playing these games. Oh yeah. Uh I am also a huge fan of tactics games. So oh. tactical strategy games. Mm. Yeah. So I'm all in for this. Yeah. Let's I will it. say my favorite is Persona 5 Royale specifically. And I, I will definitely be playing shelf, Persona 5. Oh, wow. So you even own it. So you just say, hey, I, you know, I own it. I have no reason to say that I don't own it. I own it. It's just on the shelf, man. I can't keep up. I get it. I get it. And that's a that's an investment. I actually might be replaying Royale on Xbox um, over this kind of break over the next two month break we kind of have because I only have Final mm-hmm. Fantasy and I don't really have a lot of things over the next two months other than armor core so i got a lot of time to spare i think i'm gonna replay persona 5 royal which i'm very excited about and then of course i'll be playing this when it comes to uh xbox on game pass should be very nice yep myth force later this year looks Nothing. cool yeah uh, I, I, not, not me not, not for me yeah this i i about punched a wall Oh, so yeah, is that? I lost my. <laughs> I lost it. I didn't think this would ever happen. Super yep. Mario RPG was announced. It will be a remake, of course, of the real, regular game. It looks like it is kind of made in today's art style, but still keeping the the thematic art direction of the original Super Mario RPG. It looks great. Yep. Coming out November seventeenth. 
day one buy for me. I can I I cannot wait for this. This is going to be so good. I never finished this game. I got like halfway through my original playthrough of the game. I cannot wait for this to come out. I will finally be able to finish it. I haven't played this game. Uh, when the leaker said that there was going to be a remastered or remade uh, SNES, SNES game, RPG. I was like, Chrono Trigger, let's do it. Let's I, freaking do it. So I saw someone say that, and they were like, so it's either Chrono Trigger or Mario RPG. And I was like, I'm eating either way. So I don't, yeah, I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've heard great things about Super Mario RPG. I haven't yeah. played it. Uh, so I'm excited for it. I am excited for you, dude. This it's a really great game. Finally, hear what this Gino is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I saw Gino, but like I still don't know why people love him so much. Uh, there's this was very Nintendo. Um, I get it because they're the movie made so much money, but but what was this? They just announced a Peach game is coming, and that's it. They didn't give us a title, didn't it's give us a Nintendo date. Thing. We we this is a, a slice of the game. We don't really know what it is yet. Yeah. But it's definitely not that Peach game that people were not happy about. Uh, the Super I, Peach. I be, Super Peach. Wii Wasn't it called U, Super Peach? I yeah. I could be way off. You didn't could be didn't totally she right. cry to fight people yep. or something? <laughs> oh, my God. But this looks cool. The it first like playable a, Peach a game, and it's her emotions that she uses to yeah. fight people with. <laughs> Just yeah. crying and having a fit. Uh, next up, Luigi Mansion Dark Moon. It's a port of a 3DS game that's going to be launching next year. Cool. Let's do it. My wife loved the Switch Luigi's Mansion, so I'll be buying this for her. And yeah. I liked watching it, too, funny enough. Like, I, I didn't really want to play it, but like, watching her, it was very fun. Luigi, I'm going to say it right now, Luigi is the better Mario brother. I've always picked Luigi over Mario, too. I don't know yeah. why, but I always did. Because he's taller. Maybe that's it. I'm attracted to taller men. That's what it is. Batman Arkham Trilogy is coming to Switch this fall. Who? I cool. I I. We would only never... did this. We only did this because Arkham Knight didn't sell as well as we thought it. Would. <laughs> so. Gotham Knights, I think you said. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Gotham Knights is what I'm. Gotcha. Talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, when I saw this, I was like, I guess you just want some free revenue. I guess yeah, like because people will buy this. I thought yeah. it was crazy. They were, you know, which, you know, I can name them. Witcher 3, these random games that come to Switch. I'm like, who's buying this? They sell. So why not? I guess. I'm also surprised that the trilogy is not already there. It does kind of seem weird, right? And it's yeah. random. They just right now they're like, by the way, it's coming to Switch soon. Like, oh, I, cash okay. grab. They need yeah, the money. That's what it is. They want the money. They need the money. Yeah. Warner Brothers Discovery is like, we need cash. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh gloomhaven september 18th i don't don't have nothing not for me yeah, cool not for me. just dance 2024 my wife will love this i will probably be dancing with her but aside from that just change the name to just let it die just let it die we dude these need... sell i don't know why i don't, sell. I don't know they why. do i i think just people like dancing <laughs> we need to take those group kids of people excluding your wife <laughs> but take these people and just Take him out back. And Take him. Out. Oh my god! <laughs> the stance should just not get be him right. out of here. Honestly, they, didn't Ubisoft? Well, let's go way, way back to way back. the show where Ubisoft was looking for money. They could have just put out another Just Dance. Just, just Dance twenty twenty three two. But exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I. They also have Unlimited, which is like a subscription. Hey, people! I knew people who played this. I. They buy every single one, which I'm like, all right, I guess. And, and they uh, subscribe to the service, which is like 10 bucks a month. And but you Insanity. get like hundreds of songs. Insanity. Have fun. Silent Hope, October 3rd. This caught my eye. I'm kind of interested in this game. It seems like a mixture of like Persona and Pokemon kind of thing. Silent sorta. Hope. Was this the one with the, the seven heroes? Uh, I'm yes. Yes. Where they can't talk. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. this was more to me this showed off as like, oh, we're we can't afford to get voice actors. So we're just gonna make it a, a thing like I oh, think yeah. one person talks. I don't I don't remember. I think I read that. The king. The <laughs> yeah, king. Yeah, that's right, it's that's the right, guy that right. made the game. It's that's the guy right. that made the game. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I, I'm into this, but 
it I, looks cool though. I, yeah, like, the, yeah art style I, looks great. the art style looks great, but like I, this is I'm a you know one I'm one of those weeby boys. So like you yep. you put some anime stuff, I'm I'm probably gonna check it out. I, I understand. Let's see here. Next up, Fay Farm. Not for me. Yep. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Cool. Co- you know, coming to Switch. Just reminding people. Yep. Maniac Mechanics. Overcooked at home. Yeah. That's what it is. Overcooked with cars. Uh, yeah. It's just so. I, I hate to tell you, everybody, we got overcooked. I don't need this, this moving out, this making cars. Mm-hmm. Overcooked happened. It was great. I don't think your guys are going to recapture it. I'm sorry. This one was trying the hardest because like, yeah, it's like late. Like it looks, I mean, it looks exactly like Overcooked. Like some of them yes, tried to do really something does. a little different. This straight up just looks like Overcooked, but with the cars. <laughs> I think moving out has the stick figures. If I'm one of them, they, has they stick, looked a little like different. Yeah. yeah the, the, okay. the, the, the. Uh, Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope DLC. Every time I see this game, I will forever remember Yves Gamont saying Nintendo told him not to release it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so every that's, time I see it, is, I just think of that. <laughs> I also imagine the guy that does the, the uh, direct voice like, hey, here's what's next. Or whatever. yeah, and him yeah. just saying like, Dun-dun. yeah, well, we told Ubisoft not to release it, but here's the DLC. <laughs> we told him not to, but here it is. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> This next one had me pop because anything Dragon Quest, yeah, at least got my attention. I'm probably not going to play this game, but the mm-hmm. art and the music just, ah, oh, it gets me going every Phenomenal. time. Dragon Quest Monsters, Dark Prince, coming out December 1st. I thought this was originally going to be like them revealing Sandland again. Oh, oh, it's this, it's a like the way it drama. started. Yeah, yeah, the way it started though, like yep. demons and all that stuff. I was like, oh, Sandland. Yeah, I get but, it. But no, it's not. Good for Dragon Quest. Yep, I'm excited. I'll be checking it out probably. Next up, we have Pikmin. This is when this was technically, the, I think, like the reason the director was made, maybe kind of because they had to yep. show the game and it's due out very soon. Yes. So they had a deep gameplay walkthrough. Uh, they showed you how the game's going to be different. This time you can go out in night, which I guess you couldn't do in the other ones. And you got glow right. Pikmin and you could throw around Pikmin yes. and they're having a great the, everyone Flash looks Flash. like they're having a great time. Yes. all the pick I, look like they're having fun i uh i have not played pikmin one and two i am a huge fan of pikmin when i first saw it you know, my cousin had a gamecube i saw him play pikmin and i was immediately in love with it and just never played them i played pikmin 3 when they got re-released on the switch i'm excited for pikmin 4 i'm even more excited that pikmin 1 and 2 ports are coming physically so, yes, they're coming physically, and then I think they're already available to buy. So, yes, you buy them on the eShop right now. A demo for Pikmin 4 comes out June 28th, and of course, Pikmin 4 launches July 21st. So, you'll be able to try out the game if you are trepidatious on buying it. Yeah, uh, this is a little show off Metal Gear Solid Collection Volume 1, or I should say, I guess, Master Collection Volume 1 is coming to Switch October 25th. Uh, they will all be available separately on the eShop, which I thought was interesting. I imagine this will be the same for all other platforms as well. It, it, also to note, this will include like the NES ports of the, like the original Metal Gear Solid, which is very cool. Um, and then they have, you know, state, you know, they had all the other original ones. Interesting. I don't know if you saw this. Apparently the website that shows all these games. I was the, just going to say the yes, same so, thing. Apparently they have placeholders if you look at the HTML coding and they left in the other games that have not been announced yet. So you and can assume a volume coming. two will be yep. very coming very soon. I wouldn't be shocked if it honestly is next year because these are just ports. They can get yep. them out like that. I wholeheartedly agree. I this is a big strike against my gaming record. I have to say I've never played a Metal Gear other than five. So, oh, man, you don't know what I, you're missing. It, that's what everyone says. So I'm excited to give them a shot. Um, I have crazy. I played a tiny bit of. Two. Okay. And I watched my dad play a lot of two back in the day as well. Um, okay. So I got I got to the point where uh, maybe this is three. You, you I think you'll know. I was I got to the point where you play as Raiden. That's in. That's two. OK, I got to the point yeah. where I played as him. I played a little bit of that. I saw a vampire guy yep, uh, that was getting shot and he like killed a bunch of people. That was really cool. But something else like came out or I got busy and I couldn't go back to it or something. Yeah, 
I would highly recommend playing all of them. I will. I I will. I need to fill that void because it's yeah. it's pretty jarring. I haven't really played any of them, so I, I should yeah. at least try it. I, again, I played five. That was wild, but it was very good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Vampire Survivor is coming to the Switch uh, uh, August seventeenth. This is a great game. I'm happy people are going to be able to play it on Switch. A perfect Switch game. I have it downloaded on my phone. I tried it once. I was like, okay, I get the appeal. I guess. Yeah, it it really if you got like addictive personality, this is for you. <laughs> like if you yeah. want like dopamine, mm-hmm. this is this is the heroin needle over and over again. Like you know, yeah, this will help you. I played a little bit of it. I'm not like insane like other people are for the game. Like I heard people like are like this is the best thing ever. I'm like I, you know it's good, I, but you know I'm not like crazy for the game. But it's very very fun. Everyone should at least give it a shot. It's like four dollars, so like yeah. definitely play it. Uh, this was just weird. Headbangers Rhythm Battle Royale, October thirty first. It's pigeons, but they I think fight with their heads or something, or or they no sorry they don't fight with their heads. They like music. They they like music and they like bob their head. Yeah. And you, I assume you, you do the they best rhythm their head. to, yeah, they the head, the head bang their head. Yes. Exactly. Um, yeah, nothing cool. else sad here. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. Uh, this, I'm sure a lot of people are excited about. Penny's Big yes. Breakaway. This is coming early next year, 2024. This looks fun. I'm not a platformer guy. Probably won't be messing with it. But the moment they said from the team for, uh, of Sonic Mania, Sonic Mania, I did yep. kind of perk up a little bit. Like, do I play this? I don't know. Yes, I I would say yes. Please play this, just because the Sonic Mania team is phenomenal, and I can't wait for this game. This yes, is probably one of my one of five highlights of the, mm-hmm. the direct for me. Oh wow, that's okay. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Way five of the Mario Kart DLC is coming s- sometime in summer. That's all they had to add. They announced that there's a new uh, uh, map and there's new people that can drive and things, but they didn't really tell you much else. Surprised they didn't have a date because it, yeah. you know why would you announce you it? But tell I guess me they didn't. You could tell me, yeah, we're actually putting out 25 ways of to <laughs> Mario Kart DLC. I'd be like, okay. Yep. If this was wave twenty six. Yeah, I would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. It's been out for that long. It should have had probably twenty six waves, but it never happened. Yeah, yeah. This one, I actually reported on the previous week. I was happy I wasn't completely off base. So this was leaked. Uh, I was very excited. I was like, oh cool. I that 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 episode like just went live. So I hope I I hope someone caught it. Uh, Star Ocean Second Story R November second. This I'm looks sick. I cannot yes. wait for this game. This is this day one. Looks amazing. This looks great. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. This is the second Star Ocean game originally on PS1, I believe. 1998, mm-hmm. off the top of my head. That might be a little I late. I believe Maybe. so, yes. No, I think Somewhere... you're right. Okay. Um, it... Yeah, I can't wait. I'm playing this. This looks great. I mean, it looks really pretty. It's yes. a a little too much octopath for me i wish it was a little more star oceany but i'm playing it now i uh i did see that the star ocean one was released of a yes a year ago, uh, first departure ago? r i believe is what it was called it's part of literally first the departure r yes i believe that was the, the first remake the only reason i knew this is literally last week I reported that Square Enix's support site accidentally leaked the logo for this. Okay. okay. And then I, and upon researching the title, I was like, oh, so this is the second game. The first game was First Departure R. That's why Second Story R makes sense because it means it's a remaster. That you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was con- I was confused with the new Star Ocean. Yeah, I don't even remember yeah. the name. It's a shame yeah. that I don't because I used to love them it and now great. I couldn't care less. Yeah, is it out? The new one could be. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's been you could have told me there was two star oceans that came out within a month of each other. I would have believed you. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I used to keep up with them because I used to like them, but I just they fell down in quality and I just haven't been able to to get myself back into the series. But maybe this will be a good primer to try out the other ones. Right. Not for me, but WarioWare Move It is up next November 3rd. Uh, you know. It's always fun to watch people play it, like maybe in a stream or something, but I don't play these like little mini games. They seem to be for to play with other people. Yeah. And I'm just 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have anyone that would want to play the movie with me and dance around yeah. these things. I'm good. Uh, I popped real hard for this one because I've been waiting for a 2D Mario for way too long. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, October 20th. Very oh, soon, and I love the confidence that Nintendo held this for so long, and now we are getting it in just a few months. Very, I very happy to see this. I love the confidence of Nintendo. And like, yeah, who cares if Spider Man is coming out the same day we're putting it out? Yeah, they they're same like day. they're they're like who's flinching? It ain't gonna be us, fool. <laughs> Spider Man or Mario? <laughs> <laughs> Wink. Like, it's funny. It's they aren't the same, no. but there is some overlap. I wouldn't be shocked if Spider Man moves. Just for the oh, sole fact that. Just because it's Mario, though, like like you could see that dominating yeah. the news cycle. Especially like you don't want to be around that. Yeah. yeah, like especially because of the movie. I I yeah. would do it because there's no harm in us delaying it two weeks. Zero. Yep. We get more polish right. time. It's fine. Yeah. I w- I probably would, but it you know it's not as easy as saying delay two weeks, even though it kind of is, did, but it isn't. They did a whole big to do. They did. Yeah. They did. They probably, probably regret slightly it. regret it. Like, oh yep. no! <laughs> Again, it, it probably won't hurt them that much, but I still would, just in case. Yeah, uh, yeah. just in case, because it's Better it's the new sorry. cycle that's the problem. Like, you won't Better get a, a, a lot of traction, and not enough people talking. People gonna be, a lot of people gonna be talking about the Mario. Will enough mm-hmm. people talk about Spider Man too? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, uh, quickly, I wanted to quickly add, I'm very, very excited about Mario. This is actually a really good direct. I'm not a big Nintendo guy, but I do watch them because it's just, you know, it's fun to stay in tuned with them. I, I like seeing what products they have to offer. And this was a great one. I was very happy with the presentation. It didn't lag that much where I feel like many directs do. I feel like many directs yep. drag on a bit, specifically when they kind of show this, the same games or at least mm-hmm. the same type of games. Uh, but I was very happy. I mean, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, the 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 uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Star Ocean, the the Super Mario RPG. I mean, just those three by itself make this really great. Um, can't wait. All day one buys for me. Anything you want to add about this direct before we move on? Uh, this direct was probably one of the better ones that we've recently gotten. The, Definitely. You know, we've we've had a bunch of lackluster uh, directs, but I'm okay with it. This paid off. We didn't yes. expect it. Of course, Nintendo loves to do that thing. Yeah, we're doing a direct tomorrow, so be prepared. Be ready. Also, oh, by the way, it's in the morning. Peace out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited for m- most of these. I would say, you know, we have some lackluster titles, but that's okay. It's not for me. Uh, but, yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. I'm proud of you, Nintendo. Good job, Nintendo. I'm sure you care about what we say. Yeah. <laughs> and while you're Miyamoto, making you billions of dollars i know you're listening to this miyamoto miyamoto oh my god that'd be amazing he's he's just listening like oh they liked it i'm glad <laughs> 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 all right now this was mere moments before uh we were going live we i found live. this yeah. so i threw this in i could not make a write-up uh i will be reading this it was actually an update by the time i uh put this up so i'm actually glad i didn't do a write-up because i would not have caught this uh e3 2024 and 2025 have been canceled la tourism board claims now this is from vgc read by andy robinson great great writer andy robinson always happy when i read andy robinson is killing it Okay, so this is according to the Los Angeles City Tourism Board, which notes in a meeting packet, this is spotted by Reset Era, funny enough, published on Wednesday that a summary of planned city conventions includes E3 cancellations for 2024 and 2025. E3 was due to return for its first in-person show in four years this month. However, after months of buildup and uncertainty, the show was canceled in March. And, of course, there was an update that I just mentioned earlier in the article that reads as such. In a statement issued to VGC, E3 owner the ESA claims that no final decisions have been made about next year's potential event. Quote, ESA is currently having conversations about E3 2024 and beyond, and no final decisions about the event have been made at this time. End quote. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the article. As a reminder, read Pop. Recently bought E3 under their wing. The same people do these PAX events and 
uh, these suches. So I long said E3 is pretty much done for and gone, and not really relevant anymore. Um, I think this year is more evidence of that. Unfortunately, uh, I say that as a guy who has loved E3 and I would have loved to have gone at least once before it was actually gone, but they do say it's no final decision. I don't really believe them. I don't think they're going to be here for at least next year. Very b- bottom line, because these things are th- this. This takes planning. This isn't something you're like, oh, you know what? I think in in like six months yeah. we'll have it. This isn't something that just that that's just that easy. So th- these are final plans. So at the very least, they're not doing it next year. I, I highly highly skeptical of that. Twenty twenty five. I'll I'll give you like okay. Well, maybe final decision haven't made on that yet. The person who put out that statement was like. Fuck. <laughs> supposed to see this oh what no supposed to see this i i I, um, I wholeheartedly believe they did not know this would be shown which is yeah. hilarious because their documents go online so why wouldn't you think people will see this <laughs> like uh, it's good who would have thought that somebody on reset era would have picked this up but it was on the tourism board which goes online people are online and yeah, people like, find everything we like, got things to worry about. We got the people <laughs> in the Someone the Titan, found it. You know? <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't have too I much to add. Say. I've long had my moratorium of E3 on this show. I'm very sad. I, it's it's done. Even if it's comebacks, it's not E3. Wish, so it doesn't I wish even... I it wasn't done. Oh, I, I wish too. Really I'm wish. right there with you, brother. I'm, I wish I think we could have at least really... one more. Keeley has destroyed the summer, you know? He has he has opening night live. He's got the game awards. Why do he have to kill E3? You know? I don't think he killed it. He just well, I mean he his actions killed it, but I don't think that was his motive. Um I I am one of the people that say that that Keeley killed E3. I don't know. I, I mean he, like... I guess I guess I'm kind of dancing around it. I guess he did pretty much kill it. Um, pr- I mean, I guess purposely, because I imagine there yeah. isn't really a world where both exist. So he had to make his stuff better, which probably wasn't very hard because the difference is E3 was a place you had to go and pay money to be at, which was right. very, very expensive. I actually have an entire video about their history and why it went away and what led to its kind of demise. And it, it's pretty much as simple as they got too expensive. They didn't really mm-hmm. do what people wanted. PlayStation left. That was Pretty much the death toll, you the biggest yes. competitor in the entire industry doesn't show up to your event. That's that's bells ringing. So, yes. Now, uh, of course, I, I'm. I need to say for people that don't listen to my shows or whatever or my content, uh, this is not true at all. Keely didn't kill E3. E3 oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you're in joking. my head, my head canon Keely killed e3 he right? took, a knife he, to go to he e3 took the knife <laughs> he took the knife and just stabbed him in the back <laughs> just taking e3 down and yeah i mean it, it, that is uh so sick to say too like e3 did kill itself that that's pretty much yeah. the perfect way of doing it they pretty much didn't pick an identity they refused to modernize and they just fell apart it's pretty yeah. much all you have to really say it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. You know? It is what it is. Of so we're of course we end every show with date updates. Now, not very many date updates this week, so I'm going to give you not going to. I read this every single week when they release it. This is everything coming to Game Pass for the week. Now, this is pretty dense, so stick with me here. Some of these are live as a recording, like this one. Need for Speed, Unbound, Cloud, PC, Xbox Series, SNX. This is a part of EA Play, of course, coming to Game Pass. As of you are listening to this, it is available right now. This is something I might be uh, downloading today. Bookwalker, co- uh, console and PC, June 22nd. As of today, this is available day one in Game Pass. The Bookwalker is a narrative adventure in which you play as... Oh, Jesus. Etonin Quist. Edonin Quist. A writer turned thief with the ability to dive into books. Use your powers to journey between reality and book worlds and steal legendary items like Thor's hammer and Excalibur to restore your ability to write. Sorry, that's Etienne. Thank you, Please. Etienne. I saw that went too many consonants. <laughs> uh, Bramble, the Mountain King cloud console and PC, June 27th, my birthday. Bram- I'm not reading that. Fist, forged in Shadow Torch, cloud, PC, and Xbox Series S and X. 
available June 27th as well. Story of Seasons. Somehow there's more of these games coming June 29th, uh, console and PC. Arcade Paradise, console and PC, June, thir uh, June 3rd. Sword and Fairy Together Forever. <laughs> Cloud console and PC, July 5th. What does that say? In <laughs> I'm not reading that. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Everything leaving June 30th. Remember, if you'd like to uh, get your 20% off while it's still in Game Pass, either the game or its DLC, you have to lock that in before it leaves June 30th, of course, as of recording. And as you're listening to this, you have a little less than a week to do it. We have DJ Max Respect V or 5. Don't know which one it is. Cloud Console and PC. Emperor of Sin, Cloud Console and PC. Matchpoint, Tennis Champions, Cloud Console and PC. Olja? Olja or Olja. Olja, if it's Spanish, I don't know which one it is. Oh. Uh, cloud Console and PC. Omari, Cloud Console and PC. Road 96, Cloud Console and PC. Pretty whatever week for Game Pass. I will say Bookwalker is definitely a game I'm going to be checking out, but I. other than that, pretty good for me. Hey. You take it or leave it. Immortals of Avium have been delayed to August 22nd. If you're excited about Immortals of Avium, it has been delayed to August 22nd. Could not care less for myself, as it does not look very good. Now, we finish the show just like we begin it, with a single question I pose to not only my co-host today, but everyone listening at home. This is, of course, what's queued up for the week. This could be a game, a movie, a TV show, a book, a comic book, a manga, whatever it is, maybe a podcast or an audiobook. You got to let me know in the comments below, or you can tweet at me at NVM1000. But I ask you today, Ruben, what do you have queued up? Final Fantasy 16. And uh, Secret Invasion, episode one, which kind of dipped a little because of the whole AI fiasco. Oh, but... they, they're they tearing this thing apart online, aren't they? Yes. I mean, it, it looks bad. It looks, it really, looks bad. really bad. I mean, it's really shocking. And then they tried to justify it, which is probably more hilarious. Yeah. They were um, like, oh, it's because... You don't know who's around you. So we used AI to generate this thing. And that's why it looks hilariously bad. I mean, that looks I mean, I am shocked how bad that looks. I want to remind everyone that is Disney. Disney. I wouldn't be surprised if next week it's not the same intro. I wouldn't be shocked either. That That's Disney. They make b -b billions b -b yeah. billions and they're making an ai make their art i mean you f i would that is like an insult <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, like, I, that's I, an I insult agree. <laughs> it's I shocking agree. shocking uh but other than that uh nothing much nothing nothing yeah. much so you said secret invasion and what was the other one uh, final fantasy 16 final fantasy 16 of course yes i mean interested mm -hmm. if this is your type of game I don't know your gaming style yet, oh, so I don't know I'm if you'll enjoy it. Final Fantasy. You're all in, you're on it. Yeah. No, no, okay. All in Good. for Final Fantasy. Square Enix is probably one of my favorite uh, third-party developer. Yeah. So most of the games I'll, they make that aren't various day life or yeah. farming simulators. So. Yeah, some sort of random farming sim thing that yeah. they've made. Some And for some reason, they've released 20 of them in the last year and a half. I don't know why yeah. or how they're doing it, but they are. Yeah, I agree. I I am, um, I'm in it. I pretty much echo Final Fantasy sixteen is pretty much the main priority. I might be on and off on Diablo if, if either my um, friend or dad needs some help in like some story or finishing out their story. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much it because I want to finish Final Fantasy sixteen before I go back to Tears and then start mm -hmm. my Persona Five Royale playthrough to get the achievements on Xbox. So. Pretty much Final Fantasy 16 until you hear from me next. Might do an early impressions of that um, next week if I have something to go on. It's such a story heavy game, so I, even first impressions I feel like are spoilers. So I don't know. I might I might do it though. I might do it. And also, since you're playing it, I'm gonna keep you in mind for a potential spoiler cast. We should do something. Yeah. We should I'm do something. Yeah, that'd be good. We could talk offline. That'd be very fun. Okay, sounds good. Um. Aside from that, Ruben, I'm letting you go. This was a great episode. Two hours, 18 minutes. Very, very healthy. I like it. I like I like that. It's good. nice and girthy. Anything else yeah. that you like girthy? I got nothing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ruben, for joining me. Where can we no find problem, you? Buddy. Of course, if you like directly, I will be posting all of Ruben's things in the description. So you can go there directly. But Ruben, tell people 
for audio listeners, where they where can they find you? You could find us on YouTube at the Penultimate Conquest. You could find us on Twitter at Pen Conquest. You could find us on our website to, if you want to leave a voicemail for future episodes of Ooh. whatever we're doing, whether it is Marvel Mondays Initiative, uh, Anime Nation, uh, Cross Media Show, which is our TV and movie podcast, and the Penultimate Game Show. You can go on uh, the Penultimate Conquest dot com slash listen to leave us a voicemail. They're all very good, and I highly recommend Marvel Mondays. Those are very fun, <clears throat> and I do like the Cross Media Show. That is very, yes. very fun, too. I try to listen to everything, but I definitely always tune in for Marvel Mondays just because it's fun, and I'm not keeping up as much anymore, so it's fun mm-hmm. like to listen, like, oh, you know, what's going on? And the thing, Cross Media Show is just fun, fun banter yes. that I enjoy. Yes. We were supposed to do a Flash episode this week, but so uh, one of our co-hosts had a problem with AC, and he lives Shame. in Arizona, so it's Ooh, so he's dead. He's, he's died. We hope not, uh, but yes. <laughs> the Flash very was shockingly good, I have to say. It was shockingly shocking. good and shockingly bad at the same uh, time. Oh, it's shockingly good as in like, wow, I was, I was, I mean, I was expecting bad. Like I was going in like, this will probably be a bad CGI movie. was bad. Oh, oh yeah. It was, no oh wow. That, that beginning. But the story was surprisingly good. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. I very much liked the ending. No spoilers. Me too. Me too. Me too. I did too. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, listeners. Thank you. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Five-star review on any audio podcast. Check us out. Patreon.com slash CG Achievers if you'd like to support financially. But, of course, any sort of support, I thank you for. And until next time, go Achievers.